When you first turn up to this place, you're so scared. Petrified looks horrendous. As soon as you hit that first obstacle, there's no let up all the way down. For me, it still gets my heart going. Ah! Above the woods, you can't really see too much. But then you come out of the cannon, and it's all clear, and you can see what you should be scared of. But with a track this difficult in yeah. these conditions, I think we're going to see a perfect run this afternoon. Oh, wow. my goodness! Oh. oh! Ah, horrible drop there. Oh, it goes down! Happy to be down in one piece. Absolutely over the moon to be down in one piece. That's all I wanted. <laughs> If you want to win this, you're going to have to race every centimetre of this track. 0.7 back there to the last split for Atherton. Vestavik is going to lift the bar here at Hardline. Bernard Kerr takes Red Bull Hardline. Catching for Bernard. Hello and welcome to the final of Red Bull Hardline 2021. We're in the stunning Dovey Valley here in Wales where the world's best riders are about to take on the most progressive race on the downhill circuit as they attempt to stamp their name on this year's trophy. Over two kilometres of unrelenting terrain combined with some of the biggest jumps you'll see on any downhill course on the planet. And the format is quite simple. The fastest rider down wins the title and cements their name in Red Bull Hardline history. We'll be bringing you all the racing action live and uninterrupted so you won't miss a moment watching with us throughout the afternoon and we don't just have the world's best riders on the course we've also got them in the commentary booth reigning uci mountain bike downhill world champion mr reese wilson joins me it's great to have you here for what will be an unforgettable day's racing what is it that makes hardline so unique reese Oh, it's, I think it's pretty obvious, Rob. We've got massive, massive features that you just don't see in any other competition in the season. And then between these massive features, there's some of the most technical terrain that we've ever seen also. So this really is a truly unique event. And Rhys, you've competed here a few times in the past. I think you know exactly how harsh this place can be. Yeah, absolutely. I was here in 2015, had a pretty big crash, managed to get up from it, another crash in finals. It was just biting me. Came back in 2018 and it bit me a little bit too hard. Took me down, ruined my shoulder. And earlier this year, of course, can't forget your huge crash in Lazay, forever now to be known as the Flying Scotsman. Oh, massive crash! Oh! How important is it for these riders to get up and carry on and get to the bottom after a crash like that if they can? Absolutely. Well, I mean, there's always a bit of luck involved. If you can get up and you're, you're pain free, get on that bike and get going, because the last thing you want is to be overthinking what's just happened. It's best to move on, get on down the hill and be thinking ahead. OK, well, shortly we'll be taking a look at the final start list. But before we do that, we're going to take you down this imposing course. Every year this place evolves to set new challenges for the riders. And this year it certainly doesn't disappoint. Fifteen seconds down the course here from the start there at the very top. This is a small but incredibly significant section. I'll tell you why. In 2019, the first three riders to this point were G. Atherton, Bernard Kerr and Joe Smith. They were also the first three riders across the finish line down at the bottom. In years gone by, riders have just survived this course. They've always saved some energy for the huge obstacles that are yet to come. Those days are long gone. Now, if you want to win this thing, you've got to attack from the very top. You've got to be in it to win it from the very first pedal stroke. This top section is an incredibly important part of the hardline jigsaw. From that key section, the riders are going to enter the woods, where they're going to be faced with a rock drop. Much easier than it looks, but it's very technical in the wet. They're then going to be fired out with a cannon jump, which leads them into this massive 19-metre step up. These are two of the most extreme jumps on the track this year. This takeoff has been moved back, and it's also been mellowed out, so the gap is much bigger, and the high speed coming in is a lot higher. It's going to lead you onto the landing, which then brings you to the biggest change in the course in the 2021 race. This is without a doubt the most significant addition to this year's hardline track. A brand new step down on a massive scale. 14 metres from the top of there to the landing. That's 45 feet. You could easily park a double decker bus on top of another and the riders could clear it with ease. It is causing problems though. To nail the landing requires absolute precision and that will be a lot harder under the pressure of a race run. 
this brand new step down 100% has got the riders' respect. Once the riders have cleared that massive step down, they're going to charge down through dirty ferns, over the waterfall hip jumps, and that's going to lead them in to the biggest, most iconic feature in the track, the Red Bull Road Gap. This road gap has been made a metre longer this year and a metre taller. A whole new run-in, so it looks totally different for the riders. It's going to be extremely important to come into this, take some deep breaths and plunge off the end and make sure you're absolutely bang on precise. After the riders land the huge road gap up, they turn right and head into this relatively innocuous section of track, at least after everything else they've dealt with on the way down. This part of the course, though, has definitely played its cards in recent years. In 2019, Joe Smith was on an absolute scorcher before he flatted his rear tyre. And who can forget, in 2017, Adam Brayton risking all on this right-hander, only to find out the local woodwork is a lot more sturdy than he is. Oh, he hits that tree so hard! The reason we see these incidents down here is because the riders are exhausted, yet they're still pushing incredibly hard. It's so crucial to nail this drop, to carry as much speed as you can along that right-hander there, because that's the speed you will carry down over all the kickers and jumps before you hit the finish line. Well, they don't call this the most progressive race in downhill for nothing. Make sure you check out our brand new interactive history of Red Bull Hardline, where you can take your own journey from the start gate to the finish line, remembering some of the gnarliest moments along the way with the riders and bikes that have ridden to glory here. Head to redbull.co.uk forward slash hardline history. Now, before we head over to commentary for the start of the final, here's a quick reminder of what happened during some of the incident filled practice sessions here earlier this week. Craig Evans, year five here, former winner. How's it looking this year? Pretty nice, man. First dry year, I think. Yeah. Like, properly dry. So a bit different, speed's a bit different than that, but it's running sick. The changes to the course, you, you liking them? Yeah. So far? That hip's really nice. Yeah. And then there's a big drop up behind. It's looking really scary that I'm really scared of, but... <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to be following anyone. Boys have been following in the turn, it's like full dust cloud. How does that change things? Does it run a lot faster than usual? Yeah, or? it does run a lot faster. We're definitely having to grab a little bit of break. Breaks for both? No, or? just for the big hit. hit. Just for the... How are you feeling? Yeah, a little bit nervous. I just had a bit of a crash, actually, further up. Oh. Hi, Grandad. How's it looking? Uh, very fast race, very fast, like... Yeah, I think it's just go as fast as you can on this first bit. And, and then the no, no breaks for the next one. Oh, oh good. Good. yeah. Braga has just landed, he's had a pretty big crash. He's, he's up and he's OK. Yeah, you look like you've got off relatively sweet. You've blown out the cords. Yeah, and... that's the worst thing, really. Yeah, yeah. that's the worst part. Favourite pants. Yeah. Well, glad to see you up, right? Cheers, bro. Cheers. Myself and Reese are now in our commentary position, ready for the start of today's race. Now, yesterday was supposed to be qualifying, but due to weather conditions, the sensible decision was made in consultation with the riders to cancel qualifying and instead invite our 24 riders to compete in today's final for the title of Red Bull Hardline champion. Reese, I'm going to say it was the right decision, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. This course is so challenging as it is. These jumps are so precise. And if the riders aren't comfortable, you're just it's a recipe for disaster to be honest and we don't really want to see that and the riders didn't feel it was right and I genuinely believe that was the right call side winds off of this stuff is yeah it's just not what you want to see so well it was we the saw, right call yeah and we saw a few incidents but today it's idyllic out there look the sun's even shining here in Snowdonia that never happens so I think you know it, it's about as good as it could be isn't it right now yeah well, you absolutely can't argue with this as the riders are saying this morning the track was perfect not a breath of air it is you'd argue too dry but come on we're in Wales let's not let's not be negative it's it's perfect it's looking good it really is and we've seen some amazing action through practice all week haven't we I mean it's the the guys have really been pushing the boat out again 
Yeah, absolutely. Another fantastic year. And for me to be trackside this year as well, you really get an in-depth look at it. You know, you get to see, you don't miss anything and you get to hear everything the riders are saying. And I'm excited for this one. Track's dry, it's fast, and we've got some guys here that are up for a race. So. Well, one of those guys is Jim Munro. He actually uh, went down pretty hard earlier in the week. And this was, I'm going to say, because of the wind, the bike just gets kicked a little sideways there, Reese. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Slight side wind on that step down. And I think he was having a hard time predicting it, to be honest. So I, th I would imagine dragged the brakes, came up a little bit short. Whoa. Nothing you can do now. Hope for the best. But he's OK. He will be starting this afternoon. Yeah, he's a tough unit. First year, I think first year doing this as well. He's been surprising. Yeah, that's well. right. And Bernard Kerr, of course, pre-race favourite. He went down pretty hard too. Yeah, no, Bernard's, Bernard's pushing the limits this week. You can tell for track one, he's the fastest guy. Definitely got my money on him. And uh, yeah, here we can see, pushing the limits down the inside of that rock. Tuck the front. There he goes. That sucks. The ground here is so harsh as well. That's, that's a painful one. When you're searching for the tents, these are the things that can happen. Well, let's have a look then at the start list. These are the riders who are going to be in action this afternoon. We start off with a couple of free rides, big heavy hitters. Vincent Tupin from France, Thomas Janon from Belgium, both Red Bull Rampage riders. Matt Hucknell in his first ever Red Bull hardline. Johnny Salido from Mexico. Keep an eye on that man. Jim Renro, we just saw him. John O. Jones, Elliot Heap, his first Red Bull hardline, the man from the EWS. Craig Evans, of course, has won here in the past. Sam Gale, a youngster from New Zealand, having a go. Matteo Iniguez, one of the uh, up-and-coming downhill World Cup racers. Adam Brayton, always a contender here. Chaos Seagrave, Cade Edwards, they bring a lot to this event. Laurie Greenland, of course, a former junior downhill world champion. And then we go to the last four. Brendan Fairclough, a man who can ride free ride and downhill equally as well. Braga Vestavik, the big Norwegian, had a great outing here last time. Joe Smith, always pushing for the win here. And, of course, Bernard Kurt, the last man down the mountain. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting. That has given me a bit of a shiver, that, as reading that. Yeah, honestly, that those last four guys, I think they're all here. They've been, they've got the experience, and I think they're up for a race. So I'm excited to see this ending for sure. Well, the riders should be at the top now. We're about to go up to the start gate and get these finals underway. Here we go. And the first rider is Vincent Tupin, yep. better known as Vinny T, from Evian in France. This man, 27 years old. Yo. Jersey's still calm, no wind. Here we go. It's going to be a good one. It's absolutely perfect up there. Into this first right hand. Well, a bit of wind actually looking by the dust there. And coming into this big rock slab now. There's a couple of different lines here. Two pin going all the way down to the bird. Longer way round. He's had, I think he's got That's a flat a tire. Oh, he's got a flat rear. You can hear it going. Not how this man. Oh, yeah, um, unfortunately, that is. I predict that being a bit of a theme today, Rob. That's with it being so dry. I don't know why, but with it being dry, these tyres seem to slice a lot easier. Guys are going faster. Well, that's right. There's a lot more because it's so dry. A lot more stone has come up through the ground. Oh, the amount of loose rocks coming out are just are crazy. I don't think you could hear it on the rock slab. I think it was just after. Bang! Somewhere there. Vinny T has lost pressure. Oh, what a shame. Not what he wanted. Absolutely not. Well, I actually, you, you I actually spoke to Adam Brayton in the pits this week and we mentioned tyre inserts and whether they would actually help you for this. And they, they don't because the features are so big. Unless you have the 30 PSI in your tyres, it's unrideable anyway. So and what is a tyre insert for people listening at home? A tyre insert's like if anybody knows motorbikes, it's a moose. It's basically a foam insert that goes inside the tyre. So if you do lose your pressure, you're not riding down on the rim. So yeah. the tyre can stay on the bead, so you've at least got a fighting chance of getting to the bottom, which is fine in a World Cup track when the features aren't as dangerous as this. But with a, it's the equivalent of having about 15 PSI in your tyre. So yeah. when these guys are running 30, 35, it's nowhere near enough to get them up the jumps. So once you get a flat on here, tyre insert or not, it's unrideable. It's over. So That's that. it's cutthroat. It really is cutthroat throat so he's going to be gutted with that to survive a whole week as well well that's the thing he's been here all week i mean he's going to go away it's been a great experience he's had an incredible time it's such a amazing event to watch because you know well a we've got you know so many riders from so many genres here an eclectic mix of riders from free ride from downhill from slope style and then the fact that they all managed to come together and actually see them helping each other i mean you know you know you're a world yeah, yeah. cup racer the world champion world cup's downhills 
They're not that friendly, are they? I mean, it's like we're all, it's, you know, everyone's out for themselves. Everyone's trying to win. It's very, very different here at Ardline. I think the size of the features and what these riders are going through together definitely brings them together. Yeah, I've talked to these free ride guys a lot, actually, in the in the pits this week. And that's actually what shocked me, how steady these guys have been on the first few days. And I expected that, you know, Rampage experience, you'd come here and this stuff would be nothing. And these free ride dudes have sung nothing but praise to the racers and how crazy and gnarly they are, especially yesterday with some of the top guys coming down in the wind and saying it was absolutely fine and it was perfect. And yeah, freeride guys stood there going, absolutely no way, there's no chance. So if those guys are saying that, yeah, you really know they're big. These are big old jumps. So. Yeah, that's right. And we go from Vincent Tupin up to Tommy Ginon. Thomas Ginon from Belgium. Tommy G. I saw him giving his back tire a quick squeeze there, making yeah. sure he's got plenty of pressure in it before he leaves the top. Him and Vincent actually work together at Red Bull Rampage on the same line. Usually they share a line there, being probably the only two French speakers there. Now, this will be interesting. The start order, actually, he, was, he told me in the pitch just before he went up for his run, he was looking forward to having somebody doing a full run in front of him that he could watch to see how the jumps were going to be riding because they explained that these freeride guys actually go a little bit slower and prefer to pop features, whereas rider, racers are very more tucked in high speed. So him not getting to see that now, I wonder what he's thinking. I've no doubt added, added some nerves. <laughs> I don't think they have half an hour, but there will sure, definitely be though, right? no pressure put on these riders to go unless they feel 100% comfortable. A little bit more wind at the top than there is further down. Tommy G readying himself to drop in. He's ridden at every Ram Red Bull Rampage since 2013, this man. Twice, top five finishes there. One of the biggest names from Slopestyle and the free ride side of the sport. Good. And he hadn't actually done the big step down until this morning, I believe. Crank flip in. You can, <laughs> he's here to enjoy himself. Tommy, Tommy G just wants to get down today. Well, let's enjoy it with him then. He told me he's going to try and make up for his, he said himself, lack of speed and a very capable rider, of course. Whoa. Oh, well, as I say that, he goes off track a little bit. But Janon said we might see some big tricks from him down here this afternoon. Yeah, for having fun, he's charging that rock section pretty hot there, so blew off the track. I don't think the riders are going to be too strict on, uh, on who's on the track and who's not this week. Turning down left now into one of the very fastest parts of this track, the cannon. 17 metres, 55 five feet across that, into the step up. 19 oh. metres in length, some 62 feet, and here is that new 40 metre vertical step down. And Tommy G absolutely nails it. But he's looking good, I've got no complaints here. The windsock nice and dead up there as well, so looks like we've got good conditions, which is great to see. Broke his ankle in 2017, Tommy G. A lot of injuries along the way, of course, in the line of work he does. But looking good here at Red Bull Hardline. Into the uh, dirty ferns now, this big step down. Oh, and as nice. you said, it was fascinating. I was under the same belief as you that, whoa, oh. big knack knack. Like to see it. On that hip there. That hip has actually uh, been slightly modified this year. Bit less kicky, whoa, full's edge now. Two big doubles up over the wall. And they are big. It's, you can tell these free ride guys in the air, man. They're so relaxed. They're just cruising, throwing the bike around. Really obvious to see that these guys are very, very used to the airtime. So much steez and style. And this section looking uh, completely different. Tommy G, is oh, he pulling up? I think he looked down. I think he's got another flat. We've got another flat. Well, look at this then. It, I'm still holding my breath just to see that rear tire. It looks like Tommy G may have a flat. Or is he just backed off and taking his time? Oh, hard to say. It's really yeah. hard to see. I think he's, uh, no, he's going on. I think Tommy G just enjoying himself on this run. First time here at Hardline. There's a lot to get used to over these huge features. The road gap, 23 metres take off to landing. It's been extended actually by one metre back and a metre higher this year. And now one of the most technical parts of the track race, these drops down at the bottom. That's what I can't really explain to the guys at home that with these bikes are set up so stiff for these jumps in between. And this, these technical sections are so slow, awkward, tight with a stiff bike. It's just, it feels horrible. Yeah. It's really difficult to get down there with speed. And thankfully, it is dry this year. There's a lot of rockery in the ground there that is incredibly slippery. So the last straight down for Thomas Shinov. 
huge jump, so easy to over jump that. Gets a couple of pedal strokes in before he comes down to this last jump. Oh. 20 meters, that's 65 feet through the air. <laughs> Janon sets the bar, it's a 2 a 58.48 then. The first man to cross the line. <laughs> Yeah, you can see Tommy G is absolutely stoked just to be down there. He's, he's going to be so relaxed now. He was nervous about that. Yeah, he was. And with good reason, I think see it's fair to say. Coming a little bit hot there, going clean off the track. It's funny, a lot of these guys won't have been racing this at all this week, so that's just a small mistake. He's not used to coming in so hot. Keeping the front wheel up there, safe, back brake, brings the front wheel down. And yeah, see our wind socks dead there. So yeah, honestly, I think we're up for a good race here. Hopefully these conditions hold out. And for most of these riders, nearly all of them, it's going to be their first time run today. Obviously qualifying Absolutely. was cancelled yesterday because of these strong winds that, that oh. we saw there. Look at the start yeah, of the man over there. Sick. Call that kiss of death in the day, back in the X Fighters days. You would have seen right. some of those. Incredible stuff then from Thomas Yenon and the next man from Sweden will be Oscar Hanstrom. Fourth time here at Red Bull Hardline, which I'm going to say is a massive advantage to the riders that are here for the first time. There's so much to get your head around. So Hanstrom then, the speedy Swede on track. He's one of the guys that's looked, again, like you said, that experience. He's been here enough years now where he's getting comfortable enough with the track to start racing it. He's, he's looked well, he's approached practice well. I've, I've been really impressed with Oscar. And over a second. Oh. I heard him saying yeah. something there. Yep, had a stumble in there somewhere. It's a really, really tight left-hander. And actually, if you, can, if you can get into the game right out of the gate, which we know you're going to need to today to take the win, that small wind section is going to be massive. Tweaking the cannon. 1.3 up then for this man. Oh, nice. perfect. Perfect, perfect. And the rider's saying it was hard to scrub the speed off down there a little bit. Oh, this section is, oh. Whoa. That's crazy steep, guys, honestly. That is such a steep section there. They're, they've got their brakes. That's them braking as hard as they can, and they're only just getting their speed under control. That's a lot scarier than it looks. Picking his way along this straight. Rocks left and right. That can take you out. Armstrong looking good through there. And oh. extends nearly five seconds up now. Styling it up too, you can see that confidence from the previous years. Oh, feet off as well. Yeah, he's enjoying himself out there, it's cool to see. The best showing of Hanstrom so far. He's had some uh, indifferences here at Hardline. One year his bike didn't turn up, another year he crashed and broke his bike. Another wig one fur from Hanstrom. But a man who loves this event. And down through the section that used to be forested, uh, these trees removed because of disease, actually, but doesn't it make the track look different? Some of the riders saying the waterfall's edge now a little bit more difficult because you haven't got the trees for reference. I'm going to say you're going to disagree yeah. as you were <laughs> hanging from one of those trees here a few years ago, like yeah, a bat. Yeah, no, there's got a few people hit those trees over the year. Mark Wallace, Rory Cunningham. Oh, no. Oh, well, it's not easy down there. He's OK. No, he's going to be good after that. That was a... Oh, he's going to be annoyed at himself for that it, one. It, that was stupid. Well, Easy, very, easy done. And, you know, a little bit different to a World Cup race here, Reese, where riders would jump up, grab everything, get back on. It's nice to see him sensibly making sure his brake lever was in the right spot as he goes across the oh, road gap there. Just as well. A little bit sideways, actually. Yeah. No, you do, yeah, you don't want to be rushing yourself here. This course does not need a rushed attitude at all. You need to be calm, collected. No harm, no foul for checking himself before he went off of there. That's the right thing to do. How hard is that drop there, Reese? Absolutely brutal, Rob, honestly. It's the equivalent of going on your garage roof and just pedal dropping off the flat. You've got no momentum. There's basically no landing. That's a, that's a really horrible drop. And again, you throw it in at the end of the end of the run. It's just, it's violent. It really is. Oh, You'll so see a lot of head slaps off of there this week. Riders tired when they get down at 2.5 back then. It was a good run for Harnstrom. I think a lot. Oh, and safely across that huge finish line double. Harnstrom, wow, just 1.7 back. Thomas Janine, Janon leading, excuse me, with that 2.58. And the course record since the start was moved, actually, to where it is now in 2018 is a 2.52, a 2.52. So we're going to see, we're going to see a new record for the course. Of, although the track is different, big technical section has been taken out and replaced with that enormous step down. There it is. He's um he's gonna be you know he's gonna be annoyed with that. You can see him on some of these jumps. He's taking his feet off. He's enjoying himself, but 
you know, he was on for a good time there as well. He was riding all the stuff in between really well. So I'm sure he's going to be a little bit frustrated with that. We're going to see what went wrong here. He was on the that right line, there. I would say. Oh, oh he just no, got it wasn't, line. yeah. That rock down the rider's right, pretty much every one of them was actually chain ringing it before they drop off. So I don't know if that maybe just pushed him a little bit further than he had planned or a lot of things could have went wrong there, to be honest. Hard to tell from a camera angle. So one of the 50 to one crew, Matt Hockenall now. First Red Bull hard line for this man. That first drop's horrible that they, they make look like it's absolutely nothing there. See, Matt's another one. I think first year here. He's, he's just here for a good time as well. He told me today he's, he's really looking forward to just getting a full run in, getting down and enjoying himself. So you honestly can't argue. I've said before, the guys that are here for the first year or two. It's an in... It, there is nowhere, no racetrack on earth more intimidating than Red Bull Hardline to turn up at, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, like you we said in the, in the pre-show, the, the, the guys from Rampage are stood on the top of these things, yeah. cacking it. Like, they're really scared about this stuff, so... Oh, well, Hocken out, styling it out across there from Buxton. In oh, Big there. Well, fair play, perfect on the step down. Oh, and carrying some <laughs> speed down there, wow! Wow. Oh. So Matt, uh, he's, he's not shy to throw a motocross bike around as well, so getting loose like that and letting the hips throw, he's, he's going to be loving that, I'm sure. Lives and breathes the sport in his business, merged equals. And great to see him here. Rides a lot with Josh Bryceland, who raced it back in 2018. Just 1.6 there. I'm not surprised the speed he uh, exited the big drop from. This is difficult. The jump before gives, puts you on the wrong line for that left, really. Honestly, there's there's so many awkward parts like that on this track where you're just not quite where you want to be and need to be, but you almost don't finally tune the track because you're just so worried about the features all week. So that's where that experience, coming back year after year, you actually start to pick lines and yeah. get creative for the track. A lot of these guys, honestly, it's just it's riding down whether whether they're six inches to the right or left doesn't really bother them. So no, it's that's fair right. enough. It's fair enough. Yeah, a lot of riders will only worry about the features, particularly in their first few years here. And as you say, Reese, yeah, the more comfortable you get with the features, the more time you can spend on the bits in between, which are probably the bits where you will win or lose this race. Do you agree? Oh, hand that's no questions. You heard the chain ring there, actually. That's yeah. A lot of riders are going to be doing that. No, that is, that's about the size of this. It's the, the jumps can only be ridden so fast because squashing them at a really high race speed is pretty sketchy. You can see them all just riding off them. You just have to ride those at a certain speed. Sections in between, you can actually get aggressive and make some time back. But again, they're so awkward, it's, it's easy to throw it away as well. So yeah, <laughs> it just comes back to how hard this track is. And here's that big drop. Whoa, wow. Hawker's making it look nice, actually. And so crucial to nail that. And that little right-hander there, as you can see, Nowhere really to get a pedal stroke in if 5.8 back then at the last split. And this big log drop here, uh, you need to come off it as fast as you can and Lovely. carry that speed down, but it's very easy to over jump it in flat land. Big pull over the finish line double. I can help. Safely down at his first rampage. Good man. Respectable that. 3.05 on the clock. What a run. 20. He's going to be stoked, yeah. Oh, styling it up too is no problem. You see the guys there, see, as soon as you, yeah, that jump, you have to go so fast for that big step up that when you land, you have, a, I don't know, three me meters maybe to gauge your speed before going off that blind drop. That is, so, hand, in my opinion, it looks like it's riding as the gnarly section of the track. That looks really difficult to control your speed for all three of those features. Yeah, there's an awful lot going out on, a, on there. And, it's the first time in a long time this race has been dry, but I'm going to say that it's never been this dry. Like, the course is blown out, the surface is loose, it's rocky. I mean, and here's Lewis Buchanan cool. from Inner Leather in Scotland. Now, this is a man who spends most of his time on the Enduro World Series, and he's actually on his Enduro bike today. A slightly shorter travel bike than a downhill. And he's put the big forks in the front of it. He was just showing off his dropper seat post at the top. I don't think he'll uh, be extending that for any pedal sections today. So what, Lewis is a racer, and I've never seen him at any events. Like, oh, he's Nearly two, two up. up. Yes. Yeah. He's, look at him, he's racing it. He's one of the first guys here that we've seen that's coming down to really have a go at this. But what an incredible this man has been. He comes from downhill, of course. Did spectacular things as a junior. 
in the World Cup. Bronze downhill medal back in 2010. Nearly four seconds up then. And we should tell you as well that two days ago, this man had a huge crash. <gasps> oh, he over jumps that and then he goes off the side. Very, pulls it back. Very well saved, dear. And pulls it back and he's carrying oh. an enormous amount of pace down there. And I was going to say, Buchanan had a big crash off the finish line, double. And I found him actually being carried out by two riders, such, uh, such with the damage to his ankle. So a miracle that this man is riding today. And honestly, Lewis spends basically... Oh, oh nearly God, eight seconds the then up. He so. spends all his time in the Tweed Valley. There's no jumps. I mean, this is so far from his home riding. It's, he's, he's amazing. He honestly has done amazing this week. He's, he's blown me away. He really has. Yeah, he, he's been determined, quietly gone about his business. Some squash in that. The One of the few that squashes that really well, actually, this week. He's been getting on well with that jump. And the takeoff. When you get down in the bottom of that hollow, it's nearly vertical. It's like a wall coming out of the ground that these riders are going off. Absolutely, and the, the ground being so dry, the takeoff actually is about crumbling about half a way down, so it makes like an almost awkward, rocky kicker at the top of it, too. It's just, yeah, the dry conditions are causing a whole, whole load of issues. Taking a different line down through the rocks there. Avoiding that big rock with it, everybody hitting their chain rings. We've seen Oscar made a mistake there. So, I, personally, I, I saw that line and thought it was better. So, I think that was a good one. Whoa! He looked like he had to pull in the air for the road gap. That was interesting. I'm not very sure what happened there. I don't know. He didn't look like he perhaps was as fast as some of the others, but safely across it for Buchanan. And on his way to Sen. A green cut time oh, at the bottom. Oh, oh. See that landing is that is violent. Big hit there. So what's the advantage now for Lewis Buchanan? Oh, he's up by over 13 seconds then. So it's a massive run from this man. Just this last straight to go, but it's not over yet. The big double that he crashed off earlier in the week to come. No pedal strokes there. Couple of pubs, a big pull. Buchanan's done it. And he crosses the line fastest, 2.45.8, your new time to beat. The first rider under the course record here of Bernard Kerr's winning time from 2019 up to 2.52. Well, Buchanan... This was crazy. Oh, this... my, like, that cliff off the right-hand side of there managed to get it slowed up and get himself off that drop. That was a very impressive bike ride in there, thinking on his feet, reacted fast and got the job done. I'm honestly, I'm so impressed with Lewis this week. That was fair play. Come for the Tweed Valley myself, and yeah, our biggest tabletop's about three foot long. So <laughs> this is a, this is a huge, huge step up for him. So he's yeah. going to be driving north tomorrow morning with a big smile on his face. He can go home very, very happy. As can all the riders that have just got through this week. Oh, the emotions when you finish this race, honestly, it's the biggest relief ever. Yeah, the guys are going to be relaxed tonight. They're going to be so happy. Well, all the way from Woo! Mexico. Holy Toledo, it's Johnny Salido. <laughs> Second time here at Red Bull Hardline. A man actually that went to Red, Red Bull Rampage in 2019. And this was part of the journey there. Finished second at Proving Grounds. The qualification back then for Red Bull Rampage. And it's unfortunate in that uh, he got injured the day before the finals there. But two seconds back then at the first split. Shows just how crucial, actually, is the things uh, tighten up here, this first sector is. Absolutely. He's one of the few guys on a full 650B bike as well, obviously. He's, he's a man that likes air times and likes to do tricks, so he doesn't really have any requirements for a full 29er or a mullet setup in his life. So, I mean, you could argue we'll hinder him a wee bit, but I'm sure he's not worried about that. He's, that's his comfortable bike setup. Perfect. Up onto the top. For you, of course. Right on the knuckle there for Salido. Perfect. And fast down there, and of course, Reese. yeah, I mean, it's a different genre of the sport he comes from. We love a mullet in downhill World Cup racing. This man probably likes the smaller wheels, help with the tricks. Absolutely, yeah. When these guys are trying to throw their bikes around in the air, you just don't need the gyroscopic effect, which yeah. is what a bigger wheel creates. It becomes harder to turn, which in some cases is better. Throwing whips, a lot of the guys prefer full 29ers. But yeah, he's, he's going to be, he looks comfortable in this bike. I can't, he's got no requirements for a 29er. So. Whoa, Styles over there, the man from Guadalajara. Just 21 years old. Massive smile on his face all week, to be honest. He's been one of the most stoked riders I've, I've come across. Blasting around on pit bikes and having, <laughs> yes. having a mega time. He's been enjoying himself. Grabbing a big handful about breaking the air on that one. Trying to get the front end down. And 
floating through this section. Again, riders, as the afternoon goes on, will attack everywhere on this track. Another thing to add as well, this free ride guys all ride flat pedals. So this rough, technical, slow paced stuff in between is really fighting to keep your feet on. And when they don't ride a whole lot of it, you can see here he's, he's really taking his time. That's, that stuff is so tricky. So. Oh, oh, he goes down. It's so difficult in there. Woo. Well, let's hope he just takes a second here, make sure everything's OK before he heads off this drop. Yeah, you can hear him, hear him making angry noises there. He's, he's not going to be too stoked for that. It's just. That's kind of considered silly mistakes to these guys, the professional bike riders, silly things like that. It's, I don't know if it's maybe a lapse of concentration. That's that massive road gap comes after that yeah. section. So is that all they're thinking about? Well, I know in previous years I've been riding through there, going, "Oh no, <laughs> here it comes." I was going to say it's definitely the only thing I would be thinking about. And you can see there with Johnny going a bit slower, just how hard those two drops down to that third drop are. I mean, it's incredibly technical, right, Reese? Well, the, the run into those, that last drop, there's like a, an awkward rock on your right-hand side, and you're basically riding off of a ridge line, and you have to, you'll see some of the later guys or the more confident guys jump into the right-hand side. There's a few routes that you can get a bit of a downside on and carry some speed out, but when you're just here to get down, you're, yeah, you're just dropping off the end of a house there. It's, it's pretty violent. Whoa, big pull across the finish line, double. Salido makes it down in a 3.10, goes into fifth place. Good man. Ah, oh, he's going to be stoked with that. He'll be on a mini bike any second now, <laughs> I reckon. I can't even see him taking the goggles off. He'll be straight to the pit bikes, <laughs> razzing up behind us. He's been loving them. Pretty perfect there, little case. Be interesting to see if any of the guys are casing that on purpose for uh, to scrub off some speed, or it looks like it's easier to get all the way over it and get your landing done because it's so important for that drop. See what went. I'm not very sure what went wrong here. Where's front wheel? Maybe just went in the side of something, or if he's waiting, we're in the shadows there. We really can't see. He looks a little bit off balance as he goes over the top. It's so steep, and if you put the front wheel into any holes or rocks there that slow the bike down, you can definitely uh, go straight over the bars. Well, this man has been incredibly yeah, impressive all week. Josh Lowe from the south of the UK here, and he has been. Well, to me, just one of the standout riders this week. Absolutely, and you can tell he's racing it. He's a racer. He's been at World Cups. I think he races a lot of the National Series stuff. He's a racer guy. He ain't here to mess around, so we could have a competitive run here. Just over half a second off then at the first split. And his very first hard line, this man, and as uh, Reese said, raced World Cups until the end of 2017. Actually came fourth at this year's first round of the British Downhill Series, so a man with some serious pace on him. Less than a second off now, then, at the second split. He's been another... Oh, styling it up as well. Yeah. Scrubs that absolutely perfectly. Nails the land in there. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Whoa, oh. whoa, whoa. Wow, Josh, boy, hanging it out. This is... Yeah, we've got some exciting racing here. Josh Lowe on the move, then, on the mountain here. Just outside Minas Dowie. He's in looked Snowdonia happy. National Park. These riders won't have any time to take in the scenery, though. Low, really on the move. Can he pull back the oh. time? Yes, he can. So, 0. 0.36 up now. Incredible. He's looked happy all week, honestly. He's been buzzing on the track. He's been one of the few first riders to drop into six. He's just, he said to me, get them over and done with. Stop thinking about it. Just get on and ride them. And for a first year here, he's approached it so well. Very maturely done. And adding that race spiced it as well. And he's, he's looking good. This could be a good one. And he was one of the last riders to be confirmed. I rang him uh, just two weeks ago and said, we've got a spot for you, Josh. His answer was, I'll have to see if I can get some time off work. I ran, he works for a technology company in London. I spoke to him here. I said, did you get time off work? Obviously, he said, yes. I said, what did you say you were doing? He said, I just told him I needed a few days off work. <laughs> so if you're watching, this is what he's at. Yeah, Josh's boss, I hope you're digging this. <laughs> well, gets a Looking little bit good. wavered in the rocks, but keeps it upright. Oh, lovely across the road gap. One of those guys on clips, I believe, so that awkward section looked like he kind of picked the rear wheel up to get himself set up better for the exit coming on that road gap, which is an interesting tactic, that one. It's a good one. Here we go. Pulling Sets out to up. the right yes. there, jumping across. There you go. Perfect. You could see him set up to the right. His left there to cut back across. What's yep. the last split going to tell us then? He was up by 0.3 of the one before, and he's over a second now then. So pulling another second, really, between splits three and four. Well, this is good stuff then from Josh Lowe. 
Here we just go. One last jump in your head here. You're, you're amped up. He's gonna, the pedals are coming down. He's in for it. And he's pedaling absolutely everywhere. He knows it's been a good one. Josh Lowe like, raises the bar. 2.43.6 now to Tyner Beat. Over two seconds into the green. Well, what a ride from that young man. He could be very satisfied with what he's done here today. Yeah, that was that was honestly amazing. Well done, Josh. He's, I, I could see him being a top 10 with that one. Look at that, perfect. Get your braking done, modulate it, off the brakes. Easy, and then here, honestly, these guys are trying their best to slow down here. This is just them holding on, really. Fancy that is wild. Off the ground over that <laughs> rise there. That's amazing to watch, what a shot. It's hard to slow down when your wheels ain't on the ground. <laughs> And this dust here provides you with absolutely no traction whatsoever. Like, your, your, brake, your back tyre can be locked up. It's really going to do nothing. It just pulls through that dust. There's no traction there. Rod is saying just how slick it is. As we go back to the top then for the youngest rider here, Jim Munro. Just 19 years old, this man came here as a spectator five or six years ago. Said, one day I want to ride hardline. Moved here from Devon to be a part of the uh, W Bike Park dig crew with Dan Atherton, who's taking him under his wing, actually living in his van in a field down the road, and he's green at split one then, Jim Munro. You can see him and, fighting uh, there to get his feet back on as he came into that camera shot, so I think he maybe had a little unclip, bit of a moment, don't know if it maybe ate some time up there. And he's actually on Dan Atherton's bike here today, the brainchild of this event, Dan Atherton, of course. Oh, and in touch, less than a second off. Honestly, Jim's been another one of those guys, the youngest one here, and he's handled it so well and taken a massive slam this week, and he's still throwing himself at it. Whoa. Mega, mega impressive. Nailed it onto that landing net. And another rider would be very glad of that big uh, catch burn there, that left-hander, the speed of him. On well, the dry weather this year is helping this out so much. It's really given us some racy action here. This stuff before in the, in the wet was just, it's, it's like riding on glass with water on the top of it, honestly. It's like your bathroom floor after a shower. It's horrible. So these guys are going to be appreciating some dry rocks. 2.2 into the red. Josh Lowe, though, did lay down a score to hold a good line down that landing there. Didn't close this turn out for himself too much. Here we've got another one of the main features. He's going to get the... See, the riders are really patient. Not too many of them aggressive into that jump. You've, you've got to get that one right. A spectacular showing. 19 years old, this man. Now, this is the only bit here that you can really get a breath. After those waterfall jumps and then coming down in this technical section, it's the easiest part of the track. Not that there's many of them. I know there is many. Down to oh, the rock. Oh, wow. Oh. That's got dug out there. You can see it. Honestly, all week, every time I've been yeah. up at that section of film bits, there's been rocks falling out of that section. Yeah. That section's changing almost every run for these guys. One row across the gap. Whoa. That yeah. berm, too, it's going to be getting yeah. rough by now. See some big holes forming. The driest Red Bull hard line we've ever had, I'm going to say. He got through there nice. Carry good speed through that turn. He's on the good lines here. Jump across. Not bad. Not Spen as good as not as good as Josh, but good. Spends all his time digging and riding at Dovey Bike Park. Josh Low, 224, 1.7 back from Monroe though. Well, what a run from this man. Up with one of the fastest riders from the UK, Josh Low. Oh, oh, goes that deep looked there. Looked like he maybe went off the side of that there at the start. That was. Oh, and he's pedaling. He's pedaling hard here. Oh. oh, and he's over. Thank oh. goodness for that. Oh, that was a wild ending. Oh. He goes third, 2.6 back. Yeah, well done, mate. Well done. And everyone knows. I genuinely think he nearly jumped off the side of that log out the trees there. That could have been huge. Maybe he just took his eye off the ball. Thought he was, thought he was there. Riders do say that, you know, you're getting down towards the bottom. Of, it's easy to let your guard down, or it's easy to let the pressure of knowing you're nearly there get to you. You just don't want to blow it, especially Absolutely. if you've had a good run. And I'm not sure how much training he does. I mean, he's, he's, I think he's, as far as I'm aware, he's not in the World Cup circuit, so he's looking no. at the style on him, though. And putting that, putting that crash behind him from earlier in the week as well. Absolutely. Look, I'm right off the edge of it he there. Was. Oh, he was right off the edge. Days. And he went deep here, which means he would do lack speed all the way down. get his cranks in, I think, case this little long and low which is so, oh, mate, well done. And that last straight is slow today, right? Reece? Really slow, yeah. Me and Matt were actually up there earlier and the guys were digging some rocks out and it's just sand, basically, and sand and bicycles is not a good combination. You can't carry speed. Well, one of the most fun characters here 
John O. Jones from the UK. A man forever known as the Scorpion King after his crash on the step up here in 2019. Loves riding his bikes, raced World Cups back in the day before going to university and has now found and uh, refound his passion for bike racing. Point six back at split number one for John O'Jones. He's, he's, I think he's up for a race here. John has been here a few times now and he's actually one of the ones that's been really, really brave this week. He's been jumping everything pretty, pretty hot. And, and he had a case on this jump that none of oh. us all forget. Safely over it today. Yeah, I think, John, I think John was up for this. He's given it his best shot. Just oh, oh, the back end. Getting wayward, Jones, no problem. Brother of uh, Slopestar rider Matt Jones, of course, who's been here all week as well. You remove the trees from this section, that bit is genuinely rampage. Those guys are squirming down off that drop. That's really wild are. with the dust. What a shot. Beautiful, isn't it? Amazing to see some dust here. This man's first World Cup back in 2012. 2.2 into the red now for John O'Jones. And been riding all the EWS races, the Enduro World season, this race is. His third time at Red Bull Hardline. Get some good, strong pedals in there. Oh, he gets sent. Oh. Well, it looked like he did. Didn't look like it was a problem for Jono. It's such a steep, kicky jump. Honestly, if your timing is not perfect, basically what's happening there is the guys are pushing to try and hold themselves up, which compresses the bike. If you do that a little bit too early, your bike starts to preload back off the takeoff, which basically pushes your front wheel down on the ground. So if a rider gets stiff legs, and I mean stiff as in straight legs, straight arms, that basically means they're, they've been pitched forward, their weights come over the handlebars Whoa. a little bit quicker than they'd expected, and you're honestly passenger mode at that point. It's terrifying. As you found out, the two times you competed here, I hate yep, to bring yep, it up. Yep. I hate to bring a world champion down with that, but there it is, it's true. I've been enjoying front door recently, that's for sure. <laughs> and Jones, well, still going. It's a clean run from him. You can hear him breathing, man. This is... And when you're nervous, you tense and you don't breathe. You hold on too tight. Your legs pump up because you're squatted down. Yeah, it's, it's hard work. Not far to go now for John O'Jones. Interesting to see... The rock section as they come into the big road gap, looking incredibly chewed up. I noticed Jono was all over the road, all over the show as well. Oh, gets high on that land, and that should help him come all the way down to the finish line. Touch with this big finish line jump. Lovely, lovely fist pump in. 23 <laughs> meters that finish line double. He goes four, 3.3 back. <laughs> Oh, I can't explain the feeling of getting down here, honestly, after a whole week of this stuff. It's the That's feeling right. of crossing that line with a whole run under your belt is just amazing. And you can see it, the riders are already down rushing. I congratulate all the other riders just for finishing. 15 to go here at Red Bull Hardline. Just 15 riders to go. The biggest and the fastest edition of this race we've ever had. Perfect conditions here today, Elliot Heap. Getting his GoPro switched out, it looks like. He's also got his shorts on, just so all you guys at home know that he is indeed an enduro rider, which is, I believe the only one here this weekend. Lewis Buchanan also, Lewis Buchanan. That's right. A good go. But uh, Lewis went for the trousers. Elliot keeping his shorts on, so he must like his legs this year. Woo! He's feeling confident. And actually, Elliot Heap having an incredible season. Riding for Chain Reaction Cycles, new proof. And having an incredible season. Seventh in the first round of the Elite of the Enduro World Series. Twelfth overall at the moment, this man. Elliot been giving it boys up. Oh, great. He's been giving a big chats this week about how the physicalities of this track aren't really getting to him as much. He's used to riding 12 minute Enduros with sprints and yeah. hard work. So this, as far as he's concerned, seems relatively easy on the body. So physically. It should be good. Trains up in Cumbria. Well, nearly a second up then. 0.849 up for Elliot Heap. Here we go, let's see how he gets this section. Key section, in my opinion, here. Do it for Wigan, where he's from, sends it. Oh, wow. picks up some air down there as well. Amazing. Fast. Actually, very controlled down there, honestly, compared to some of the guys we've seen, that was lovely. I mean, you're not 12th in the EWS overall without being a pretty handy pilot, so expecting some good bike riding here. And he has spent some time as a junior more on the downhill bike. Just 23 years old now, this man. Oh, no. What's happened? Is it? He's, I'd say he's got a flat. Yeah, I think he has. It's a flat rear, I think. 
We'll have a look. What is it? Is it a flat? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Soft anyway. He may just have burped that tyre and let some air out there. Tubeless, if the if the seal goes between the tyre and the rim, which it can under extreme circumstances, which is Red Bull Hardline, <laughs> you can let some air out. They call it a burp. And this here, there's a hole developing just here. Gets kicked down there, so a few of the guys go a bit too deep on there. This left hand at the bottom is going to be nearly impossible to make. Some of the guys are getting wild down there. Yeah, the tire situation. There's absolutely nothing you can do. All different tires being used here this weekend, and they've all got they've all got different sealants inside the tire. But in essence, they all do the same job. It's designed to get a hole, seals it. Standing so far, then the time to beat a 243.6 by Josh Lowe, the man brought in actually as a reserve just a couple of weeks ago very much justifying his position here and just ahead of Lewis Buchanan from Inner Leithen in Scotland. Just over two seconds in it at the moment. And still we've got uh, 14 riders left at the top. As we go, a man who's won here in the past. 2017, this man won this race. Craig Evans from Sheffield in the UK. A former industrial window cleaner. This man shouldn't be scared of heights. Working in a bike shop now and an incredible bike rider, I'm going to say. He really is. Craig is Craig is an amazing human being and stick him on a bike and he's just a pleasure to watch. He's got a very unique style and yeah, he'll, he'll turn his hand to any form of two wheels basically and he's, he seems to be pretty damn good at them and always got a smile on his face. Wouldn't say he's the world's most competitive guy, he, he just likes riding his bike. So he's definitely here this week to have a good time. A warm, quiff local finds himself two seconds in the red then. Split number two. Whoa. Oh, bounces yeah. off the top of there. Do not want to be doing that. You see that wind, the wind sock's picking up and it's actually a side bit. wind. And Evans went pretty deep up there. Oh my goodness, how did he finish? How did he manage to stop? That is honestly, we're going to see so much of that as these guys progress. The faster you try and go down there, the wilder it's going to get. Crazy. It's his third hard line, this man. One of the biggest whips. In the business. Fourth hard line, excuse me, this man. 4.7 back, so losing some time. Surprising, actually, the speed he carried off the drop. Yeah, absolutely. I, you need to, you, you, unfortunately, you're kind of stuck. You have to go at that speed to clear that gap. And then after that, it's who's, who's recovering the best. Pick your head up off those handlebars and get the brakes on. Oh. See, his legs got a little bit straight there. I don't know. thought he was going out the front. Yeah, Definitely got kicked. A lot of these riders are. Flat out in just a t-shirt, this fella. Spends a lot of time with Josh Bryson as well. Yeah, he'll be repping that 51 merch. I see he's got his 51 pants on there, so. I think the guys are doing pretty well with that, so you can't blame them. Takes, the, uh, takes the riders left down there. Yep, I, Jen, I think, personally, it's the right one. I think that's you a do. good line. Yeah, I really do. That last rock really upsets you for that. It's really key turns before this road gap, so. Yeah, they are key. The slow parts of this track are where you can make huge amounts of time. Another one here. So awkward, this, with the drops around corners, rocks in the middle of your line. Everything trying to stand the bike up. Oh, oh. Whoa. well, got a little kick on the drop before it did well to keep it going forwards. Yeah, just dragging brakes through all that stuff just stiffens the bike up and really, really makes them hard to control. Plus eight then, into the red for Craig Evans. Off this big log drop. Lovely. That's, yeah, really nice as well. So, big yeah, pull, ooshed. 65 yeah, feet nice. through the air, 20 metres. Evans goes fifth, 8.2 back. Whoa. <laughs> I don't think that tyre wall was there oh, for riders to slide into. I'm oh, loving it. Hey, he's enjoyed that. Look at that. Yeah. Coast is a bike. He's stoked to be down. Well done, Craig. This here, so you just don't want to land on the top here. Bounce off the ground. That means you're not getting the brakes down, so it leaves it all later, which you don't want. You don't want. You just don't want to be coming off that drop frantically. Up on the Highlands there, doing a mega job with the technical stuff. Craig Ryan, World Cups, it should be relatively light work done. Again, some amazing shots from our racing drones here. Live action from them, incredible to see. See his front wheel, just as he goes off this yeah. next drop, caught the edge, almost went down right there. Whoa. 
good again just good bike riding it was fluid it was loose he let the bike step out to the side kept his weight over the top of it and managed to ride it some good piling well all the way from new zealand then this man a hired hand for pivot racing this weekend 20 years old sam gale on track looking stylish as well stylish as ever he's been looking mega all week honestly stam's another one of those riders that's really stood out to me this week World Cup racer did big things as a junior. So the speed should be there and he's showing us at split one. Already up by a tenth then for Sam Gale. This drop been made a bit easier this year with that nice uh, landing for him. Absolutely, plenty of control here. He's looking comfortable on the technical stuff. Finds himself a tenth back then. Absolutely nothing on this track. No, nothing at all, that's right. Oh, Styles it out. Oh, catches the backside there with a step up as well. Oh, deep off the uh, big step down. It controls Rips that speed. Turn. Oh, lovely, Sam. Amazing. Mega High stuff. on that bank there as well of that, that big natural rock. Wall of death there these riders are using. Oh, jumps into this straight as well. Yeah, Cade was telling me about that little gap this morning. Chaos had showed him it, so yeah, a few of the riders on that. And he's back to just 9,000, so absolutely nothing in it. Neck and neck between this man and Josh Lowe. The man sat in the hot seat out of the bottom. 243.6, your time to beat. Pump in there, gets a bit more, a bit more speed. There we go, focus. You see the guys really, really steady coming into this one. It shows you that that's a, it looks so easy on camera. And it's really technical jump. Spends a lot of time in uh, Queenstown. Right in the bike park there, this man. Still charging hard through this stuff as well. This is where the time can be made up. When everybody else is trying to rest and gather their thoughts, you can be attacking and really into some seconds here. Two, maybe even three seconds to be made up. Oh, the front wheel dancing on him. Oh, saved it though. Only been racing, riding mountain bikes since 2013, this fella. And the dream line, he said, in the bike park in Queenstown. Been his biggest practice for hardline. Yeah, he's been nice and quietly in Bernard's shadow all week, but he's clearly been watching very closely. Everybody's in Bernard's yeah. shadow. <laughs> Hard to step out. Yeah, very. He's done very well, though. He's, he's been mature about it, and he's, he's watching and listening, which is the most important thing as a youth. Just absorb everything you can when you can. So, up by 1.7 then. So, I'm finding some serious time. Between splits three and four, can he carry it down the line? It's been a great run then for this young man. His first ever Red Bull hard line. He's managed to completely get his head around it. He's going to set the fastest time, I think. It's going to be close, yes. 1.8 up. Sam Gale yeah, takes the lead here in Snowdonia National Park. You see there, Bernard, straight into congratulate him. Yeah, Bernard will be stoked on that. Yeah, boy. Yeah, man. How was that? Lovely, you love to see it. Look at him styling it up, man. For a kid his age, that's so, so cool. On a track like this, it's, that is it's just cool to watch. Heavy landing there, even if you get that jump perfect, it's heavy. Coming in here, look at that guy skipping around. Right. Rips the turn. There's going to be some cool photos for there this week. It's a cool shot, so I can imagine the photos are real nice. Well, it's incredible to see dust trails. <laughs> like, it's like I've never seen it before. No, it's been dryish here. here. No, it's been dryish, but we've never even been close to dust. So this is... No. Dust. This last At jump... Red Bull oh, Hardline. What's not going quite on? not going to see it. That last jump with the dust trail following the guys off that huge gap, like 70 foot or something, dust following them. It's really, really cool. Well, right in for the Common Cell Noble team, this man. Matteo Iniguez, 20 years old, stylish on the bike, stylish off it. And he's been looking good, and we, oh, sends that big step down double out of the gate there. And trying to hold a high line across the rock slabs, and he's up by nearly half a second. So Iniguez, the World Cup downhill racer, showing us the pace at the top. Yeah, he's, he's attacking, he's here for a race. I think first year, first year here, so he's, He's looking confident. He's ready to race. Nearly two seconds up then. Good speed down there as well. Lands deep off the cannon and properly yeah, clears the step up. On the, the brakes down to this big oh. step down. Goes deep. Get the speed controlled. Whoa. Incredible stuff. Amazing watching these riders rip. Look how fluid Inigues is on these turns. 
He's moving here, I'm going to say. Absolutely. These World Cup guys and this technical stuff have really turned it up this year. Everybody's really getting in it. Has won a Junior World Cup. Second year elite now. Still nearly two seconds ahead. Got that custom Flames kit as well. He was uh, he was really hyping that up at the start of the week. It didn't turn up for the first few days of practice, so he was riding his casual kit, but throwing the race kit on now and he's getting racy, that's for sure. Well, it's a scorching run from this man. Waterfall's edge, no problem. Whoa, a little bit deep there as well. But he is pushing on, riding hard out in the open air as well. Got a lot of his French film, uh, film photographer guys with him this weekend. Those guys have been having a great time. It's cool to see it going a little bit more international as well this year. There's plenty, plenty of faces from all over on that wide line. Oh, that was fast that down was there. That was really good. So direct. Well, that should see, I'm going to say, will extend in the next split time. I would expect that. You would. It's not far away now. Keeps it together around the long right-hand berm. Now things get technical again. Again, a massive chunk to be made up down here if you can attack it. He's carrying great speed by the looks of things. Sets up. And yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Nice, pretty smooth off there. 223 for Sam Gale. He's really breathing hard. 1.8 up. Now he's oh. over four seconds up there in Fernigay. So this is a massive run for this emerging talent, emerging talent on the World Cup downhill scene. In a guess, laying one down here at Red Bull Hardline. He is going to be amped with this one. So the he's, going to get you. he's going to smash the time of Sam Gale. 4.2 into the green. 237.49. Now the time to be in a guess. Lifting the bar here. Wow. Well and truly raised the bar there. There was, there was hard to pick flaws with that. That was perfect, you'd argue. Stylish, again, another guy that's just turned up this week and been so, so consistent in these jumps. Styling the men, jumping them for the first time. And Reese, you know, with no marker for the riders still to come, as in they haven't actually had a timed run yet this week, that's going to have them scratching their heads. A yeah, time absolutely. like that is going to mean that the riders at the top left, left at the top now, are they just going to have to go all out? Absolutely, absolutely, it'll be be interested to see what Bernard, Brendan, they've done POVs, they've done full laps. Those guys will have a rough idea, but everybody else is just seeing how we go. Well, another fast Frenchman on track now, Thibaut Lalay, 23 years old, this man. Right in for the Mond MS Mondraker team. And finds himself less than half a second off of that first split. Another one of the rider favourites around the pits. Thibaut's a great, easy going, gets in, talking with everybody. His cool second, character. His second time. At Red Bull Hardline, even more impressive when you uh, realise it's Inigues' first time here. He's got up to speed on these features. Ooh. Oh, my goodness! Yeah, no, no. Wow. Oh. Great. Oh. Fantastic to see him put it into those crash barriers there. Amazing job. Well done. Very, very well saved. That's almost where the, different, the difference is made between professional riders and everyday, everyday riders. These guys, when it goes wrong, having the ability to stay calm and do the right thing at the right time, you can see him almost, he just aimed it for the pads and tipped it over right at the right moment there. And we did see Jerome Caroli have a big crash there earlier. He won't be starting in this final this afternoon. George Brannigan out actually with a frame. Charlie Hatton on start and I think with a hand injury or a, a bit of a crash hangover still from Leger. And Johannes Fishback out as is Harry Malloy. Excuse me, yeah, Harry Malloy. More with running out of parts for the bikes actually. But uh, thankfully, Lelay, that was the right decision. Chuck it into the pads there. You don't want to be going off that drop any faster than you want to be. Absolutely. It looked like he just came in a little bit too hot and you could tell by the way he tried to soak up the takeoff. He knew it, but it, it's too late. When you're on the takeoff like that, you can't pull on the brakes. You've got no option but to try and squash through it. But if you're going too fast, there's really no way out of it. So, yeah, unfortunately it goes down there, but so glad to see him okay. And God, not right off the end of that cliff. That's a really, really scary section. So Adam Brighton at the top now. A man known as the Keswick Kestrel. Will he fly like one today? Almost certainly. Been a bit ill, actually, this year, Adam. Putting all that behind him now, though. We haven't seen him at the World Cups. But a man riding back to form, this fella. And just 10 riders left to go here at Red Bull Hardline 2021. He's really gathering up the nicknames, actually, Adam. He seems to be enjoying Grandad at the minute. I'm not very <laughs> sure why he's promoting that. 
I'm not getting involved. You said it. <laughs> I think Elliot Heat might be starting that one. Yeah, those guys are those guys love winding each other up, but they they can uh, they can really wind each other up with the best of them. Great fun down in that pit as Thibaut Lalate continues to make his way down after that scary moment near the top. Now, Rob, we just got a pretty heavy gust of wind on our back there. Yes, and, I uh, felt that. You can hear it on the microphones now, so the last thing we want, but that could be the biggest factor for today. As you said, the tape's wind, going there. Wind does tend to pick up a little bit here later on in the day. This track's really strange, like you said, with the unfortunate event of having to cut some of the trees out with the fungus up here. It's actually opened up a lot of the track, and because it's it's on the side of one ridge line, but it actually comes down around the hills, so the wind blows around the sides of the hills in funny directions. So there's three main jumps, and the wind comes in three different directions. It's either a headwind, a tailwind, or a sidewind. So for these guys to try and predict that is, it's honestly nearly impossible at this stage in the game when they've not had a practice run in it. It's t booking honestly, it was so, so lucky here. Glad we put the mats down there this morning. It's a big rock face under that mat, so. Great job, great bike riding there, saved it. So, Adam Brayton, a veteran of Red Bull Hardline. 10 riders left to go. Has had a fifth, a third, and a fourth there. Over years gone by, and a committed race to this man. I think he'll bring the pace to this run. Got that old school narrow handlebar set up. He's got a mega stiff bike. But he's over a second up in the first flip. So Brian, 1.1 into the green. 32 oh. years old now, this man. One of the most determined. Well, we just heard someone calling him <laughs> granddad there. Say, I've not seen many granddads as fast as this. No, I haven't. Keeps it green at split number two. Brayton's up for it. He's another one of the guys that's here. He's not here to mess around. He's here to win this race. So Mr. this is going to be everything he's got. Oh, he went so deep on that drop. Look at the speed oh. of him down there. He did land deep off the big 40 meter drop. Everything they can do is just get the bike under control coming at that turn. Adam Brayton, I think it's fair to say, has a love-hate relationship with Red Bull Hardline. Hates it beforehand, loves it afterwards. <laughs> like many of them. And he's over a second into the green now. So back over a second into the green from Brian. Some hang oh, time. Oh, the wind, the wind. Wow. Some serious hang time there on that big hip jump. Does well recover it. Will that be the advantage? Gone. Whoa. So the wind comes. It's a slight headwind on this jump. But the jump up from that, that hip jump, you're trying to turn down right, and the wind is coming from right to left. So the bike, your front wheel is like a sail. It's like a kite in the wind there, and your front wheel will not want to turn down into that landing. But your body weight's turned into it. You're committed off the takeoff. If the wind gets you there, honestly, again, passenger mode. And Brighton had a big crash, actually, on the waterfall's edge earlier in the week. So glad to see him put that behind him. Comes down the riders right there over that big rock. I still like that line. Looks so much more direct than the other route. Absolute. Well, a lot of the World Cup racers sticking to that, so maybe it's maybe it's a World Cup thing. Noticing those sorts of uh, little line choice differences. The road gap, no problem for the Keswick Kestrel, even though it's bigger this year. And here we come down towards the part where he actually, well, really hit a tree hard back in 2017. Now, oh, working hard off those three drops. Yeah, he's learned for that mistake. Round it smoothly this time. Will it be green at the last split? It's going to be close. He's back by oh. 0.3. Can Brian turn that around here between here and the bottom? Matteo was so smooth down there, carried so much speed over those last two drops. There's so much time to be made there. Gets a few pedals in here then, Brighton. And again, between those jumps. Well, carries a lot of speed. Will it be enough to see him take the lead? No, he goes second. Just over half a second back. So Matteo in again, still leads him with that 2.37. Adam Brayton slips into second place. Sam Gale third at the moment. Josh Lowe, Buchanan are your top five. An operation not that long ago, honestly. It's amazing that Adam's here. He's, like you said, he's missed out on a lot of the World Cup racing this year. So I think this is his second race of the year. So to come into Red Bull Hardline <laughs> on your second race, that's, oh, you see him there. The bike just did not want to turn down. Brutted his way through that. Brayton, one of the strongest riders up there, one of the heaviest. He's the wind. The wind's not going to like him. Great ride. Good to see him stick one in there. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. He'll be annoyed that he's not won, but you can't argue with that down hard line. Adam, okay, let's go down to Lauren in the finish area. Start. And you made time at the top, lost it just at the end. Where was that time lost? 
Um, yeah, I think I just maybe pushed a little too hard. I got caught by the wind on the big hip actually a little bit. I felt it coming into the turn and uh, carried a bit too much speed and then it grabbed me and I went a bit high, but otherwise I can't really complain to be honest. I wanted some redemption, I didn't quite get it, so we'll see where we end up. A bit of speed is probably an understatement. How did you keep the bike under control when you came off that big drop? Just strong as. <laughs> Where's Grandad come from, by the way? I'm one of the oldest here, so uh, my grandson calls me Grandad, and it's kind of stuck, unfortunately, so I'm embracing it. Do you feel like you're taking on that role when you're here at Red Bull High, Hardline, helping the younger members uh, understand this track and everything it involves? Uh, not really, to be honest. He actually helped me down most of the day, so, um, yeah, I've got more learning to do by the looks of it. <laughs> No redemption this year, but will we see you back even more granddaddier? Yeah, you'll see me next year, just another year older, and uh, <laughs> I'll we'll, we'll definitely be back. Fabulous. Well, it's great to watch your race. Cheers. Well, what a determined competitor that man is, Reese. Brayton. Brayton not scared to get stuck into things, honestly. He's, he's always up for it, Brayton. And if he's turning up, if Brayton's in the pits, he's here to get serious. So, yeah, like you said, you could hear, hear with the Tony's voice there, a little bit upset. And Adam Brayton sat in second at the moment, 238. In it gets the only rider to make it to the 237. Gaps a bit closer this year than we normally see. Helped a lot by the dry track. Jim Monroe there in six, just behind Lewis Buchanan. But yeah, 23 minutes, 23 seconds, excuse me, separating the top 10 at the moment. Tupin and Elliot Heap unlucky enough to get flat tyres on the way down. Nine riders left here at Red Bull Hardline 2021 from Snowdonia National Park in North Wales. I'm Rob Warner, joined by the reigning downhill world champion of the world, Reese Wilson. Reese. Uh, yeah, living up to all expectations. A yeah. dry, fast, hard line. This is something to behold, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. This is honestly great to watch. What a year to do it. I think for a lot of these guys that are doing it for the first year, this is this is the year to do it. This weather's definitely helping out. The wind's a real pain, honestly. That is, it's a shame that that's creeped in, but yeah, these guys have definitely got the track for it. It does come and go a little bit here. Blustery. Let's hope it doesn't uh, play havoc with the last riders at the top. I can see it's staying, staying pretty consistent now. Like from from being here the whole week, it, it doesn't change awfully quick. It's it seems to be over the over the span of an hour or two. So I think we should see some fair racing. Beautiful day here in Davi, one of the most stunning places you'll ever go. I don't know about for a mountain bike race, just to visit. It is absolutely amazing. My favourite event of the year. We're right on the uh, Mac loop here, which means we get all sorts of weird and wonderful aircraft. Flying actually below you as you stood on the mountain. I think we had a, what was it, an F-15 American jet go through at 250 feet earlier in the week. That made me jump. No, it is. What a place. It really has been cool. So this is Teo Erlangson from South Africa, from Cape Town. The reigning South African downhill champion. Putting her in the right gear before the off. That's what that like sleeve right means now? on his arm. Oh, if, no, no. if the riders have a flag on the sleeve, that normally I mean, means they're the national champion. Ball, so you can ball, see ball, there, ball. he's got the South African flag on his sleeve. So that's just to show that he is the uh, the national champion of South Africa, which is very cool, to be honest. And I, I can imagine no easy feat either. No, that's right. Well, we didn't talk about South African downhillers. You've got to mention Greg Woo! Minar, of course, who... This man rather, I would say rather stupidly, one, got in a bet with <laughs> that he's going to beat him at every World Cup. $100 on it. Yeah. So basically every World Cup from now on is going to cost this man $100. Basically, yeah. I can see this man being a little bit skint towards the end of the year, to be <laughs> honest. Maybe a daft move, but maybe he's just trying to get in the man's head, get Greg a little bit wound up. I think he'll do well to do that. <laughs> Almost impossible. He's a veteran. You can't do that. So, but Erlangson, look, visualising the course there, working out where he wants to be on it. He's always happy, he's always relaxed. I, I've struggled this week to see if he's here to race because he yeah. always, he's just always up for a good time, isn't he? He's enjoying himself. He's a great bloke to be around. He really is. 26 years old. And a man who actually rides a lot at Dark Fest down in South Africa, an event with, I'm going to say, the biggest jumps in the world. I mean, they are oh, absolutely massive. It's a free ride competition, of course, not a race. 
But Erlangsen shouldn't be too worried about these big gaps here. A rad man with the wheels off the ground. And fast around that first right-hander. Going down to the berm here on that. He finds himself just a couple of tenths back. Oh, Interesting sneaky. there. Sneaky, yeah, yeah. Set up on the left there. Might give him a good line into that next left-hander. I'm not sure who started that this week, but I see. But I see. Switching left and right. Massive chunk of track, this, actually. From that big drop-off down into Dirty Ferns, there's a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of time to be made and lost. But awkward, awkward like the rest of it, and narrow. And loose this year as well, 2.2 back, so losing some time there in that open section. Can he pull that back? No problem over the hip. Hard, though, you can see the riders trying to control the bike on that as they turn down that loose landing that's been said it's one of the most awkward sections of the track that as soon as you land on that landing you have to be all the way to the right hand side the rider's right the on screen left so the, the guys that land off there tight and get down to the left and the camera left is, are on the good line there first time at hard line another man who's had an awful lot going on this week trying to get up to speed on the course and all the features yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him nervous at a few points, but he's been uh, been to some of the Fest series uh, jumps this year. Yeah. So I'm sure the jumps aren't what's bothering him. But the combination of all this together, wind, the technicalities of it all, he's, he's definitely been nervous a little bit. It's been a really nice, clean run so far from Erlangsen. Doesn't look to have put a wheel wrong. Oh, whoa. huge hit there! As I said, that huge clonk over the top of that rock. It's Two point. Big. Sorry. No, you go, Rick. It's been a big problem this week, actually, with uh, oh. rock, rock strikes on the landings. With this dust blowing off the track, the rocks are coming out. And if these guys land heavy, the bottom bracket, the chain guides, chain rings, wheels, it all hits the ground so hard. And it can easily be broken. So something to look out for. Over five back then as he comes on this last straight. Erlingson's sitting down there. I think he might have been in a lower gear than he wanted to be. I think just spinning out to get it down the, down the gears there. 4.1 in the end then. Ghost third though with that 241. So a respectable, oh. a good run for Teo <laughs> Erlangsen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about the size of it. Everybody, I'm so glad to see everybody getting off this drop good today. Look at that down in there. Oh. Yeah, that's, the, that's my favorite part of the track today. I'm loving yeah, that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, just look at how controlled he is over the jump. He's looking really comfortable on the big jumps. That road gap's just ridiculous, that is. It is so, absolutely so bonkers. Big. 23 metres through the air for those riders. We were terrified just walking out <laughs> on the end of it to do a link. Yeah, hold my hand the whole way, didn't you? <laughs> I think it was the <laughs> other way around, Reese. to be honest. Well, Chaos Seagrave gets himself ready at the top. Chaos been a mixed bag this week from what I've seen. There's been times where he's just been straight in it, getting stuck in, jumping everything first. And there's been other times he'll roll down into a section, lay his bike down and just go and watch from afar on the rocks and looked rather casual and relaxed. So, yeah, I don't know what Chaos' plan is this week. Looks like he's in the zone now. Originally from Croydon in London, moved to Morzine, I believe when he was about four years old. In more recent times, moved up here to North Wales, live about 45 minutes away. Because the riding is incredible, of course, the Atherton family based here as well. Chaos knowing that, Chaos knowing French has been amazing to see this week. Those French riders coming over, their first years here, not quite knowing what to do. Chaos being able to translate into French yeah. to help those guys out. On it. it must have been a godsend for some of those guys because the nerves were high and Chaos could go over and I could see him talking through it all. And then some of the riders even following Chaos in, so you can see that's helped connect them in a way. So really cool to see Chaos helping sure. out like that. Just 21 years old, this man. Sure? It's his fourth hard yeah. line already. And a man who loves having the wheels off the ground. Amazing in the air, spends a lot of time 
with Cade Edwards, of course. Well, he lives with Cade Edwards, or Cade Edwards lives yeah. with him in Tarney. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a powerhouse, that, to be honest. Yeah. There's a lot going on there, a lot of potential. I'm not right in saying Chaos tried to backflip here last year after telling nobody. That's right, in 2019 yeah. he did, that's right. The last time we were here, so I wonder if he's got anything up his sleeve. I think it might depend how his run's going. If he's on a good one, I think he's going to try and point it down and get a good result this afternoon. He's looking calm there, he's just, he's just chilling. No wind, it looks like it's, I mean, his shirt's not moving at all, the grass isn't moving. Really have been blessed with some amazing weather today. Yeah, it's absolutely a stunning day. I'm sure Chaos would rather be getting on with things, but he's got a nice view to look at. They're just clearing a bit of the course at the moment before uh, Chaos drops in. Again, this course is uh, this course is really depleting as the day goes on. There's there's rocks coming out, and you just can't risk having a rock on the takeoff of a jump or on one of the big landings. So I think the dig crew are up where they need to be on all the important parts of the track. And if anything springs up that's causing a problem, they'll just put these guys on hold and get it moved out of the way, which is the right thing to do. Looks like we're about to go then. So Matteo Iniguez from France leading at the moment with a 2.37, and it's Chaos Seagrave on track. The European whip-off champion he won actually at Crankworx Innsbruck a few weeks ago, riding with a broken scaphoid, a broken wrist. Oh, high line across there, and he's up by half a second and holds that high line right into the trees. That's the line that Kerr was looking for when he crashed in practice. That was lovely. He's, he's, I think Chaos is here to race this year, people. He's, he's charging. Good. I like to see it. And he's up still by half a second then. His best result, a seventh year back in 2017, this man. Oh, precise. Nice, nice case there. We call that Supercross case, scrubbing the team off, scrubbing the speed off. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes these riders will do it on purpose. Good line as well. Side. Oh. This is a fast run from Chaos. Not worried about the style, which he's got plenty of. More worried about the speed, I'm going to say. He looks good so far. There's no argument here. He can be in the top five. He could podium. And you know what? He could probably win. You never know what's going to happen. We've seen the punctures. We've seen crashes. You've got to hang it out, and he is. Over a second up now, then, to taking point six out of Inigues. Oh. Between those two splits, yet still finding time for a one-footer. That was honest. That is stylish as. That's one of my favourite, favourite tricks, that. Big, lazy foot, handlebars turned down in there. Yeah, Chaos is looking good, riding fast. Safely through the waterfall's edge. Will he attack hard out here in the open? Some time to be made between these features. Kind of awkward, there's nothing to really pump, and there's, you can't pedal because there's a lot, and the track's narrow, and there's a lot of rocks to your right, to your left, stumps that you're wiggling through. It's hard to really do anything there, so the jump, the speed over the jumps rel you're relying on. You could see, as he came into that last, into the top of there, just how slippery it is, the bike's sliding from him, everyone's saying, so treacherous, lack of the lack of grip up there today. Strangely enough, dust on the rocks and roots yeah. is almost as bad as water yeah. in many ways. So yeah, this is really, really slippy. Although it's dry, it's slippy out there. One no ruts forming. 1.1 up at split number three. Looking good down here. We haven't seen him do much wrong. Nice landing to the right of that big drop there. The softest landing you're going to get. But in again, his time has gone by. And Seagray finds himself 1.4 back then with that last split. Well, I didn't see him do a lot wrong. Well, like you said, he's, he's had that thumb injury. Has he, been, has he had the bike time? Has he been training? Who knows? We'd, I've not heard for chaos, but hey, he could have had some mistakes off camera. We, we don't know, hard to tell. Well, he goes across the line third, 1.58 back then. Good run from Chaos Seagrave. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. Seven riders left to go here where now. Where am I? <laughs> Ask him where he is there. Wales, 45 minutes from your house. <laughs> Look at this, Case, he's got the back brake on there, so he's dragging the brake, dragging, dragging, dragging. Get yourself lined up off the drop. Chaos has been here for so many years now. These jumps, day one of practice, he was flowing over these. And watch the foot off here. Hand of ours turned down into it. Oh, oh, doesn't get any better than that. Very envious of that. You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, this, again, over to the left, rider's left, then across to the rider's right. Little patch of roots, you can't see them in the shadows there, but that is every little helps when a landing's that hard. 
this last right-hander out across the flat section. It's the only chance you've got to carry speed. OK, well, next man is a man who can seemingly do anything he wants on a bike. Here's Cade Edwards. To be asked to come here just to ride this gnarly track is definitely an honour, so you come back and you're like, let's give it another go. Let's see what we can do this time. The whole way down, you're just like, literally holding your breath. <laughs> you're just like, oh, made it through that. You're like, next bit, uh, yeah, it's insane. It's crazy. You've got to be so on it. And for a full run from top to bottom, like with the gnarly features, it just gets gnarlier and gnarlier towards the bottom. I definitely think both a free rider and a racer could do well here for sure. Obviously, downhill racers got that mentality to go fast, free riders are chill, but you know, there's big jumps with it's like a crossover, crossover event, so yeah, could be anyone's game. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be wild for sure. So, Cade Edwards takes his place in the start hut. Yeah. Teammate Cade. I'm, I'm pretty hyped for this. I'm pretty hyped for this. If, right. if Cade hangs it out here, he can win. He can. He really can. That's no question of that. One Thank of the most talented individuals on planet Earth when it comes to bike riding. Styling it straight on the first little step down on this course. Cade's so strong as well. So strong, so powerful. Well, 0.45 up then. And he dropped low there to the uh, berm on the outside of that big rock slab. It's not shy to get after it. It's not shy to get after it. World Cup guys should be on all the fast lines, all the technical lines. And you get the feeling this man could go and do slope style right now if he wanted. 0.6 up. There you go. Such are his skills, but loves the downhill, a former oh, downhill yeah. world Perfect. champion. Perfect, kid. Perfect. Yeah. And there as well. Kid's really, really, really cleaned himself up this year. We're seeing a lot less of that wild, chaotic, you know, just saving moments. He's actually in control of the bike, putting the bike where he wants to go. There's a definite level of maturity come out of Cade this year, which I think a lot of people are starting to notice. Tenth here last time, of course, had a ninth in Leger at that last World Cup race there. He is 0.65 up. He's the perfect. He has everything you need for this race, doesn't he? He has everything you need for this race, the speed, the jumps are not going to be a Look problem. Good line down there. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. Down the rider's right, carry the speed down through here. You don't need to pedal. It just adds flow to the track, and this needs flow. And that's because of his incredible skills in the air that he's able to do that. Absolutely. I think he's, I think he's eating some time here. This looks really, really good. It does, smooth. The former junior, downhill world champion, this man. Pretty much born in a skate park. Cade went to in Huddersfield, lived in a skate park for the early years of his life. That's where his BMX background comes from and picked up a downhill bike and he's just a natural on two wheels. Trials bikes, downhill bikes, yeah. anything is insane. Down the rider's right and quick over there, maybe a little bit offline soon, pulls it back on though. Yeah, no, that was, that's about as good as you can get that. No worries across that enormous road gap. One of the most terrifying, but the riders will tell you, easiest parts of the track. Absolutely. I'm, in, I'm, I'm excited to see the split here, see what he's done. So Reece He's looking really good. Commentating on his teammate. Wow, fast down there as well. Next split will tell us everything. He was up by 0.65, and it's the same. Well, incredible, exactly the same gap as at the split before. Can't argue with that sort of consistency. Can't argue with that. Can he pull that, keep that advantage down towards the bottom? Gets a couple of pedal strokes in there, it's critical. Yes, to carry go, the speed Kate. down here. Kane Edwards sprints towards the line, it's gonna be close. Oh. He goes fastest. 235.7 now, the time to be here in Snowdonia National Park. Kane Edwards leads Red Bull Hardline. Get on. What a run that was. Oh, he's gonna be so hyped with that. That was amazing. Well done, Kate. Brilliant. Look at this, absolutely perfect. Little back brake, it's the front wheel down. Perfect landing. Look at the surface, look how loose and blown out it is. And as perfect. you said, you know, to see him ride that smooth, I mean, the temptation to backflip everything was there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if there's any man out there who can backflip every one of those jumps, as Cade is, uh, yeah, he's not scared to throw it around. No, that was honestly, that was perfect. That was, again, another perfect run. These guys have got, uh, got some tough times to beat. Yep, the time keeps tumbling down. Just six riders left here now, half a dozen left at the top. And Kate Edwards has just... Scrubbing that, oh. Look at the skills of the man, scrubbing off the end of that big log there. I mean, 
incredible what he can do on a bike, isn't it, Reese? It's it's actually a little bit annoying hanging out I with kids. I can Cade. imagine. It really is. It's yeah. so frustrating. Just as you think you're doing something that's cool, he comes out and absolutely trumps you and makes you look silly. So, But what a guy. Everybody loves Cade. Great to hang out with. Well, from one fast Englishman to one fast Frenchman, Gaetan Viges next. From Cannes in the south of France, this man. Been doing, been impressing me all week. You know what, I had Gaetan down as one of my top three, possibly. And he went off the edge of that uh, V in the rock there and sends this step down. So, riding with a huge intent out of the gate, Gaetan VJ. And he's up by half a second of split one. So, incredible. Time keeps coming comes tumbling down here. It's hard to believe the time that they're making and losing on that first section. It's yeah. so short. But hit Gaetan, he picked a different spot to drop off. 0.68 up now, off that first drop. Perhaps carrying more speed down there. Oh, deep up there. He did deep. go deep, yeah. He looked calm, he looked relaxed. And he's pulled it back. Oh. Look at the pace of it. VJ, so fast down there. Wow. Look at the loose rocks bouncing up. You get one of those to the shin, a that's going to be a distraction. A downhill World Cup race, a second oh. overall in the Junior World Cup back in 2016. Eighth the hard line in the past, 1.1 then. So Vijay turning it on here today. He's strong, he's fit. I can, I can honestly see him holding this pace to the bottom. He's going to want to charge all the way to the line on this one. He's got the experience, he's here to race this year. He knows what he's doing, he knows what needs to be done. 23 years old, yep. Yeah. A couple of years to get his head around this place. Oh, Beautiful up and over there. A lot of time in the air there, I would say, Reese, perhaps. This one here, ah, not as good as you can. Getting that one clean because it's going to carry you all the way across this flat bit here. You see not many of them pedaling. He's getting a few in, but it's a tricky bit, that. But he's working hard. And he's riding fast through these turns, without a doubt. Yeah, he's, he's looking racy. He's looking racy. Just over a second to play with. Whoa. Oh! Oh, oh and he goes no. down! Whoa, not a good place to start. Thankfully, he's stopped. He's Turns gonna the be GoPro okay. off, first thing he does, so he's definitely OK. Oh, Gitan is again. He's going to be so bummed with that. That section is so so hard. Well, he came in over the. It was it was a determined run. He was he was attacking right from the start, and he got caught out there. But he came over it, the like top end of that rock section with such pace, race. It's kind of strange that, to be honest, when you watch it now, and I've and I've yeah, ridden it myself, and I've walked down it so many times this week. That's almost has to be approached the same as a feature. You can't rush into it. Yeah. And again, I think these guys are maybe just overthinking the fact that the road gap's coming next instead of focusing Aye. on what they're doing and taking a breath and slowing down. Because there's there's just silly mistakes like that in a section shouldn't really be happening. So I mean, at the same time, though, that section's so so tricky. Yeah, you know, we've seen a couple of riders almost do what he's done there, get to the left of that kind of inside uh, log that marks the track. Perhaps something in the ground, a rock in the ground that's being more and, ex more, and more exposed, just kicks the riders over there, getting dug out. Well, this hardline track, it's so dry this year. Anybody that's went over that rider's rock to the right that we spoke about down that rock section, hitting the chain ring, you need to focus so much on pulling up over the rock to get down into the backside that if you don't, it's throwing you to the inside of the corner. And the only people yeah. that have went off the track or crashed there are the ones going over that big rock. So I think that line around it is just more consistent and a lot easier to control. But it's not as direct, it's which is why these direct. riders are going for that shorter. That's it. I know. And it almost looks like the temptation on that right-hand line where we saw Vijay come down. You know, the temptation might be to enter it too quick, and then you get to that drop, and you can't get up. A little bit deep on here. I don't know if there's a tailwind coming off there. No, it actually looks like he's maybe got a flat spot on his rim. That was strange. And the camera angle there, it looked like there was a little wobble. Could have easily picked that up at the top half. So let's see here, he does choose the rider's right, he's sketchy coming in, jumps off it a little bit too deep, yep, and he's on the inside of the corner. And thankfully... Very lucky there. Stopped oh. right there, yeah, he looked okay, nasty. Nowhere soft to land there. Yeah, there you go, I think the key to that section is going to be patience today, trying to take a step back and hit it calm and collected. OK, well, next up is Laurie Green. And let's have a look. He's a man doing something very special and important to uh, Red Bull Hardline with his work with Trash Free Trails.
So Laurie, it's a beautiful day. Where are we? Yeah, we're here in Bristol, in Lee Woods, kind of the area I grew up, and yeah, I'll show you about. I'll follow you. Let's go. So sadly, this is something we're seeing pretty much everywhere we ride. You know, you come to the bottom of the trail and someone stopped, chilled out, and you've got all kinds of single-use pollution. So that is the sort of thing that when you're just cruising about daily, you don't notice. We don't see anything to start with, and you get your eye in, and you start to see the trace of carelessness. Whether we're in the ocean or the forest, these bits of plastic are slowly breaking down and entering the food chain. They're not disappearing, they're not biodegrading, so it's just literally mixing in with this. So how long have you guys been doing this for? Trash Free Trails did the first Instagram post in uh, January 2017. Some of my best friends have joined in and then now some brands. It's clearly something people care about. Do you believe it's possible to completely remove trash from the trails in the future? Our mission is to reduce single-use pollution on our trails and wild places by 75% by 2025 and that's a big mission, you know, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I, I, believe we, I believe we can do it. Part of being a rider is to protect this place. Totally, yeah. If the bottom of your trails come out onto somewhere like this, what do we do? What's the best way to sort it out? It's really obvious that you can make a positive difference on your trails by picking up any single-use pollution that you see. It's just recognise that you can make a difference. Yeah. Start simple, yeah? It's not just up to the individual with companies like yourself. The thing for us is we flip it around a little bit. It's like, we need you. You know, we yeah. need the people who are watching this. The best people to take action are the people who love those trails. And here is Laurie Greenland at the top then. A man very capable, I would say, Reese, of winning this event today. One of the fastest downhill racers on the planet. A man who loves Red Bull Hardline. Absolutely, he will not be shy of this. He's been here plenty of years now. I think he's getting to that point where he could really have a shot at it. Been fourth here in the past, his best result. A former junior downhill world champion. And a silver medal, actually, the year after at his first ever Elite World Championships, this young man. Yeah, boy. So Greenland on track then. Let's see what he can do this afternoon. Yeah, he's going at it. Yeah, he Charging was. Charging hard out there. 24 years old now, this man. Takes that high line across the rocks. Finds himself just into the red. Nothing to worry about there, though. Look to be fast around that right-hander, that left-hander in there, excuse me. And the way these downhill World Cup races like yourself, Rhys, can link turns just seamlessly. 0.14 into the red, nothing to worry about yet. It's absolutely what it's about, just finding that flow. He's went big there, perfect landing again. Good breaking zone. Whoa, huge landing. Sends it down there. Oh, hard to believe these guys are going to make it around that turn. Look at the pace of Greenland out here in the open. Well, showing us just that World Cup downhill pedigree right now. Yeah, flashbacks to Val de Sol, world champs run here in the dust. This man is not scared to hang out when his dust is. He's really given it a shot here. And oh, goes green. Good. Well, he was fast in the open section then. Nearly a second into the green for Greenland. Whoa. Oh, he's went big there. He's got it under control, though. Quite well back out of that hip jump. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, Laurie's another one of those World Cup racers here, so there's a lot of risk at this event, so they, they need to wait up and they need to be precise, but Laurie looks like he's really given this a go, to be honest. He's, does. He's looking racy here, so I think this is a this is a strong run from him. Seventh at round one in Leah Gang this year. Working hard in the open, yeah. You can hear him breathing there, he's definitely, definitely feeling it. Should love this uh, rock section that's coming up. The more technical it is, the better for Greenland. Comes down to go over that big rock there. Took his time yeah. though, precise. Perfect from Greenland there. That's exactly what you need, patience. Sometimes you've got to go slower to go faster. Greenland just showed us exactly how to do it. Lovely, oh, he's one of the best through there so far. That was good. I'm going to say it's going to look likely that he's going to extend. Point Lovely. eight up at split number three. What's the next one going to tell us? Hasn't done a lot wrong, has he, Reese? here? Absolutely not. I'm expecting it to be up. 
And he is by nearly two seconds now then for Laurie Greenland. So this is going to put enormous pressure on the five riders left at the top. Really good chunk of time. The times are tight this year as well. It's, it's good. Can't have mistakes. So Greenland pedaling hard. Tuck in, pulls for this last jump. Laurie Greenland should raise the bar. He crosses the line fastest. 2.34.6 now. 1.1 oh. up. What a run from Laurie. That was amazing. You can't argue with any of that. Where did I come into? His jumps were solid there as well, yeah. Really no complaints there. Lost a bit of time at the end. Hard to see where. Everybody's doing a similar thing down there, so hard to tell. Look at this landing. Oh. So big down the inside. Holds that kind of middle line down there. I mean, these guys, there's probably a point now where they're never going to be completely content with these runs. There's always things you can go up and polish up, but for it being hard line, being as hard as it is, being as unpredictable as it is, you, you just can't argue. That's solid riding. Look at that. Look at that. Hitting these jumps, these huge jumps as hard as they are. Still trying to squash them, though. Well, that's it. It's weird. It's hard not to, Rob. It's really hard not to. When you get that race environment, you know you're on the clock. Every second counts. You come into these things a little bit harder, which is why I guess we've seen some of those mistakes. Yeah. Watch the dust bloom fall off the takeoff here. That's insane. A beautiful day. If you just joined us, four riders left here at Red Bull Hardline 2021. And Brendan yeah. Fairclough is the next man to go, looking like he wants to get on with it. His fifth ever Red Bull Hardline, this man. And another rider that if he can turn it on here for one run, could definitely take the win, sends that step down there. Time to be made there, that's for sure, he's, he's on it. Going down towards the berm on the outside, and he's up by point two. There and you go, that sneaky riding. line. And that'll give him more room into that left-hander. So looking fluid at the top so far, Fair nice. Clough. A six at hard line. Last time we raced here in 2019, 0.43 up then. And a man who is going to love these jumps, riding with such confidence this week. Missed the first day of practice, but still was one of the first to go off that drop there. Pre-jump into that section as well, just helping him get him on the ground faster, get the braking done and get around that corner. It's amazing riding here. He's riding really well. 33 years old now from Guildford, just outside London. Man who loves riding his bike. And another man will be hoping for an invite to Rampage to drop through the lair box in the next week or so. He actually builds his own Rampage in his garden now as well, jumping off his house, jumping over his cars. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's not shy of jumping over or off things, so and after, there should be no stress. And after a fourth at Rampage in 2019, I imagine he'll be getting that invite. So, fair club, looking good here so far. So that's the top half done. As a racer, you kind of split it into two sections. That's the top half done, you're coming to the bottom half. You've got about three main features here. You need to get off that road gap and those bottom two big jumps done. Gather your breath and kind of pick up another charge. Get over this technical rock section and charge that bottom. Three times the man's been in the top 10 at Rampage. Eight World Cup podiums in his career. Can seamlessly go between both disciplines the road gap then. Okay, and he was perfect to that rock section. It's funny, you can the pacing zones of World Cup riders compared to these other guys, the, the kind of just starting World Cup riders or some of the free ride guys, it's red zones, amber zones and green zones. They're splitting it down and they're not rushing the sections that can't be rushed. Yeah, that's right. Pulling on some experience there. Clean down there as well. This has been a great run from him. 2.16 for Greenland. Fair club goes behind it. 2.3 back now. So a fair time gap actually. Considering he was uh, fastest at split number three, lost yeah. a lot of time there, These two and a half seconds. Going hard at the bottom, so that's where the time is, obviously, that big brunt middle section. Big pull over the finish line. Fairclough goes third, 2.4 back. Three left to go here at Red Bull Hardline. Can't imagine he's ecstatic with that, but hey, it's Hardline, he's made it down, it's been a good week for him. Shirt flapping in the wind, he's always got the shirt untucked, he's a man of style. Back in the bars turned, he's comfortable in there, Brendan, he's always looking good in there. It's no problem, is it? Technical Loves ability, it. he's another one of those riders that cries out for those steep technical tracks, and there's definitely technical stuff in here, there's not a whole lot of line choice, but of course it's not a World Cup, so you can't really start demanding that stuff, there's enough to take on here as it is.
this road gap. If there's ever spectators allowed back here in years, in years to come, guys, get yourself down here to watch. That is such a spectacle in person. Well, yeah, I mean, the atmosphere is so good at Hardline with the action on track. I've barely missed the lack of spectators. Of course, the restrictions in Wales are a little bit different to what they are in a lot of other parts of the UK, and the fans will be back here next year. But a stunning day here in Dovey. Three riders just left at the top now. We're coming to the climax of this Red Bull Hardline 2021. Braga Vestavik VT next drop. And the next man to drop will be the big Norwegian. Here's Braga Vestavik. Hardline is just a special field because everyone is just working together and working our way down. And it's always sick to be back here. And uh, I missed it. I think it's the first year it's proper dry and dusty. So that is different. I would describe my style more as free riding right now. But I love this event so much, so I just think it was really cool to come here again. Every feature is so special and so hard, so you're not just doing laps after laps, it's more like conquering every section. The biggest challenge for me is to put everything together in one run and just be quick from top to bottom. To be honest, I'm not thinking too much about the position. I'm just trying to have fun and just ride with everyone and yeah, just enjoy it. There it is then, a hundred kilos nearly of Norwegian muscle, the Viking. And he has got cords on today. <laughs> he ripped his dad's cords he was wearing earlier in the week. It looks like he's got a spare pair. Yeah, will do. Despite the temperature. I'm not saying, I wouldn't have thought they were the most comfortable thing in the heat. But no, uh, I wouldn't have thought so. But hey, hard line at three in the pub at six. You know, he's ready for <laughs> it all. You can't really argue. He's a man who knows what he wants. And doing big things this year. Coming back from a broken angle, actually, at the end of January. Got a lack of movement in it. But if you saw right. his X Games real MTB video segment that saw him take second to Brandon Seminak, you'll know what this man's capable of. He did actually win the People's Choice oh, Award. Wow, it's definitely big off there. there. Yeah, big off the top of there and there as well. What That's an exciting rider this man is. Bragg told me this week he's absolutely up for it. He's here. There you go. Look at that. Point, Point seven, seven up. Seven up then. So coming out of the gate hard. And we know from years past, oh. 2019, that first split, so important. I think he maybe pre-dropped off the rock drop there, whether he meant that or not, but that is, he is carrying some speed. 0.59 up now. Well, Vestavik, very capable of the win here today. Yeah, has raced down in World Cup. Fourth here in 2019. Had a massive crash off oh. that in practice. No problem at all. Look at him. <laughs> How did he stop oh. him? There might not be a track left for the two at the top after this. <laughs> Best of it on the move here. 100 kg of Viking, you're just not going to stop it. The wind can't even look at him. No, that's right. This oh. is incredible. Oh, he nearly went out the front door there. Point seven up still. Vestavik attacking, he's throwing everything at this this afternoon. Oh, he's S went huge. Squashes that lip but still goes so far. Oh, I hope this is a run, this is amazing. It's absolutely incredible to see what he can do then, this man. His fifth Red Bull hardline. He's oh. still patient where he needs to be though, he's got that World Cup experience. I'm expecting him to hold this together, the rocks shouldn't be an issue. He's been pushing hard and he's got away with it so far. He's Brilliant. a people's person too. The people are going to want, we'd love to see Bragg do well here. Of course, this event, scary as hell, but insanely fun. Down the uh, riders right there. And then switches back, it looked like, to avoid yeah, yeah. that drop. So a new line from Vestavik through the rocks. Making the best of two lines there. 23 metres through the air. Whoa. Whoa, this is looking like a good run. Point seven up at split three, remember. Will he extend or will he have lost time at the last split on track? Got brand new rear brake fit to his bike just as he went up for this run as well. So he's got nothing but faith in the mechanic that was doing that for well. him. Wow. Big kick there on that right hander. 216 by Greenland goes by. Oh, he's it. lost it. 1.66 into the red now. Go, go. He'll do well to pull that back before the bomb. He did. Yeah, there's time to be made, but yeah, it's going to be hard. He's on the pedals. He's going to try. Bit of a side win here by the looks of things. No problem then for Braga. The Norwegian comes down and goes into third place. 1.8 back. Well, that was an exhilarating run to watch. I can only imagine what it would have felt like on the bike. Yeah, the boys are... That was insane. I will definitely go back and watch that top half again. That yes. was mental. 
mental. Incredible. Heart on his sleeve, gapping off the top of this. Oh. Yeah. I feel so sorry for his bike. Yes. Oh. That's commitment. Bounds it. Oh, look at that. Bragg didn't even move off that one. Every other rider with a head slap. I think the, uh, the ground actually has a dent in it. The tongue's <laughs> just getting ripped up. There's probably no berm left for the last two riders. Yeah, amazing to that see. That was amazing to watch. Brilliant to watch. It looks like he maybe got a little nose dive off here, but... Oh, no, perfect. Should never doubt. Craig and Dave getting him a big hug there. Yeah, the people love Bragg. Well, watch out for this man. Today's dark horse, Joe Smith. From around an hour away, lives in Kezus. And an incredible rider, this man. And a Red Bull hardline specialist. Four times this man has been here inside the top five. Third place in 2019, remember, with a flat rear tire for the bottom section of this track. Could have been so much more for Joe Smith. He's here for nothing less than a win. And he's up by nearly a second at 0.73 in the fast split. <laughs> That's insane. I don't know where they're making that time up. Yeah, Joe's just so quiet. And then you put him on a bike and he's, he's like the loudest guy in the room. He really That's knows right. how to throw it out. Oh, over the second mark then. The advantage now for Joe Smith, 1.2 up. And perfectly onto the top of there. Regulated speed, lovely, but that big drop down. So inch, perfect so oh. far for Smith. Oh. Joe's had some amazing World Cup results as well. Is a lot of people in Wales and the UK say is one of the best bike handlers that the World that the World Cup scene's seen. He's uh, doing his own thing this year with Vitus and oh, oh, whoa, whoa, he goes down. Oh, oh big, big hit there in the middle for Joe Smith. Yeah, well, he's going to take a moment. He landed oh. on his feet. Oh, he's staggering around. Okay. It shook him. He's rocked. Medics will be with him shortly. Just take a moment, Joe. He landed that last hit he took there just before he just before he stopped, came to stop. That was a big hit. He's just on the Oh, I'm gutted for him. Gutted for you, Joe. What a shame for the Vetus rider, Joe Smith. It was going so well. He looks okay. Staggering around after it, though. Oh, I mean, I'm sure we're going to see a slow mo this year, but I'm pretty sure he clipped the pedal on something. Yep, he did. Clipped his left pedal. He's trying, he's trying. There's just no way. And then right here. Bang! Oh. He oh, took a big whack there. Well, thankfully, Joe looks to be back to his feet. And in some kind of. Uh, he doesn't look too bad. He's going to roll down Joe's gently now. Down. Joe's definitely not soft. He's not a complainer. He's, he's a tough guy. He's going to tough it out. That's how harsh Red Bull Hardline can be. That's how quickly it can go wrong. Even the easier parts of this track can Good take you down. Again, something you'd see in person if you guys ever came and watched this track, but these parts in between are so narrow, and like there, there's the pedals, the, the rocks are all pedal height, shin height, crank height. Really, really easy to clip something and, yeah, just rip a foot off or... Well, sad to see Joe sat there like that. Did he land? I'm really hoping he's just heads down because he's absolutely gutted. I'm, I'm hoping he's I OK, so. but that was yeah. a big hit. But honestly, it was... Joe's here to win. Looking at the concussion protocols already, the medics there. Yeah, these guys will be on it. Well, <laughs> there is one rider left now at the top of the mountain. Just one rider left to go. I'm not really sure. I think he might have clipped one of these. Yeah, you can hear the guys talking on there. Yeah. Everybody's pretty sure he clipped something there. He did. He clearly did. It sent the back end of that bike flying, unclipped him. And who knows, something could have went wrong just before he actually... The, maybe clipping yeah. the rock wasn't necessarily what went wrong. He might have been off balance, slightly offline, but sometimes it's too late. You either ride into the rock or you do your best to ride around it. And sometimes you're just, you know, we're, we're playing with millimetres here when you're at that speed. So And the surface, you know, with it being... You can see for yourselves at home just how loose it is out in that open section and that exposed section, looser than anywhere else on the track. I mean, yeah, like you say, these riders are millimetres from rocks and it can go wrong quite quickly as it just does and the thing is funny as well when when little accidents like that happen so joe's just had a bit of a crash there on the track so has he knocked a rock onto the track has he damaged a bit of that berm there so the next rider that comes down it's not going to be the same track you know things can move things can change so yeah there's a lot of factors up on that hill just one rider left now 
at the top of the mountain. It'll be Bernard Kerr that we'll see next. Everyone making sure that Joe's well-being is put first before we let Bernard go from the top of the mountain here this afternoon. Tense times for Bernard. This isn't what he'd want sat at the top, no, to be honest. Not. A court hold just before your last run as the last man down. It has to be. He's the most. He's the most confident man here this week. It's been. It really has been obvious. He's made it very obvious. He's. He he's is. ready to win, and he's. He wants nothing. Nothing less than a win here. He's ridden it in the worst conditions. The wind. The wet. So this is positively tropical for Bernard here, and should be. He should be relaxed about this, to be honest. Okay. Well, before he drops in, let's take a closer look at Bernard Kerr. I think this course suits a rider that's overly confident, probably, I'd have to say. If you're super confident, you're probably going to ride it good. I've won it twice, and I've podiumed it every time I've been here, actually. So quite a few expectations, I guess, but I like pressure, so it's pretty cool. And uh, obviously, I'd like to win it again. <laughs> like, I'm only really here for that. But yeah, I just want to have a fun week riding with everyone, then just go hard and race there and try and win it again. G's not here this year, obviously, as he got hurt, but I think there's a lot of good competition. Me and G went back and forth in a few previous years, but there's so many good guys now, and the track is a little bit less technical, so I think it's going to be really hard to pull time on people, but hopefully I can just make some time up on the jump, squash those more than anyone or something, but yeah, I feel confident. Super confident, super fast. The defending Red Bull Hardline champion from 2019, the last time we were here. Bernard Kerr, can he do it again? We're going to find out over the next two and a half minutes. He's been bleeding confidence this week. I'm expecting some really, really wild moments here. He's going to be hanging out. And this is where he crashed hard in practice two days ago. He's 2.26 up and safely through there. Two times a winner here at Red Bull Hardline, this man. Last time it was by over three seconds for Bernard Kerr. Is it going to be green? Laurie Greenland's time. He's up by 0.6 then, Bernard Kerr. So, a great top section for the man from Guildford in Surrey. Oh, getting that back break there. So basically, when the riders are back breaking, they're controlling the angle of the bike. They're getting that front wheel down to the ground, using the velocity of the tyre. He's been doing it all week, and man, he does it stylish. And he's carrying so much pace down here, making it look easy. Don't be fooled by that. Hasn't finished outside the top three of this event oh, since 2015. Yeah, picked it up through there. Point six now. He's on a lovely gainer here, just gaining little tens, hundreds here and there. Oh, it's all catching that. up. Holds it tight off the landing. So Kurt not being flashed, we know he can be. Squashes that perfectly, this man. Bernard, one of those crazy riders that's probably riding no body armor this week, just a shirt and a helmet on, just feeling the flow. This event almost made for him. With the big jumps. Arguably no mountain biker better than this man with the wheels off the ground. None of the races really. One of the biggest whips out there. Fifth of the World Championships twice in his career. Over that big rock on the right there. Nails it. Looks so casual through yeah, there, Reece. Absolutely. Listen, the race cannot be won there, but it can definitely be lost. Just get through there and start charging where it's a little bit easier. Oh, he's coming up there hot. Hard on the brakes as he lands Sitting there. Up. I think he might have got unclipped there, actually. Sitting down, he put his foot back on. Not a great place to unclip across that road gap. Absolutely not. Everything looks to be back on board now for Bernard. Set up to set up. Oh. Lovely. Cuts across the front of that face. Lands as softly as he can, needs to carry speed down at Greenland. 2.16, what the going to be? Oh, Still point six tight, up there. It is, not much to play with. A headwind's enough to make the difference here. And Greenland was fast on the bottom, so is Bernard Kerr going towards his third Red Bull hardline win. Just the finish line, Jack. Here we go, he's going to spread. It's a 235 to beat, and he oh. does it. Bernard Kerr wins the hardest yeah. race of them all for a run for a third time. Bernard Kerr oh, is your 2021 oh, Red Bull Hardline yeah, champion. Stoked. By over I a second in the end. I get landing and couldn't get back in. <laughs> oh, no, oh. Yeah, there you go. Hey, oh, hey crossing yeah, the line there, nodding his head, oh, looking God. across. It sounds well, like that was Bernard's perfect run, so yeah, fair play, Good fair day. play. Nice back break there, I can't quite see it for that angle. He's been doing it all week, it's honestly one of the steasiest things to do. 
perfect off all these jumps. I mean, he's jumped these jumps more than any of the guys that are here this week. So, yeah, I had my money on Bernard all week, and he's, he's delivered. Amazing. He's mega stylish, mega stylish. Little back break drag there as well. Yeah, perfect. I mean, you can see these guys that are actually racing this to win, they, they're not, they don't have, they've obviously not got styling it up. Like, Bernard is one of the most stylish guys, throws whips off at every jump, every opportunity. But at this race, if you want to win now, you have to be racing hard, and you have to be focused on the bits in between the jumps. Just get over the jumps, no heroics, and get to the bottom. He's done it. Three times a Red Bull Hardline winner. Believe the hype. Believe the hype, baby. Believe the hype. He's talked it up all week. And actually, he's delivered. I asked him what he was going to do with his prize money today when he left the pits. Actually, I was worried he maybe jinxed him, but no stress. Money's safe with <laughs> Bernard. So there's your final results then for this year's race. 2.33, the fastest time ever down the mountain here at Hardline. Bernard Kerr with that third win. Laurie Greenland, not far off in the end, just over a second back. And Cade Edwards with a great result there for third, a 235.7. Vestavik in at fourth again. Fairclough finishes in fifth. What a race that was. Absolutely, that was amazing. Matu up there, first year as well to be in sixth place, competitive. Josh Lowe, he's an amazing week. Good to see him up there. Yes. Lewis Buchanan, honestly, I can't stress enough what, how different this place is from Inelithan. <laughs> <laughs> amazing job, amazing job, honestly. Living up to everything it should do, Red Bull Hardline. An amazing week here. The sun's been out. Really hope Joe Smith's OK. It's been too hot. Yeah, Joe Smith. Send him some love. OK, Rob, throw to Lauren for a chat with Bernard. Well, let's go down to Lauren, who is with today's winner. <sighs> Bernard, congratulations on <laughs> the hat trick. Yeah, apparently. How, how are you feeling right now? Very happy. If I'm honest, it's super weird coming down with no timing board here without the crowd, because you're like, I'm not sure if I've actually done good or anything, but apparently I have, so very, very happy. I mean, you've been confident all week long. So happy taking these huge elements. Yeah. Was that key to your success today? Definitely. I crashed on the top rock slab, but all the jumps for me, honestly, I felt super comfy on them. It was just a couple of the technical bits, but I almost messed up a couple of times, blew my foot on the row gap, <laughs> and I barely got it back in, but yeah, it helped. A little bit hairy. How does experience help in those moments? Um, yeah, super hairy. A lot. I kind of almost went into autopilot, which I can't normally do, but I feel like I'm finally figuring this racing thing out, so... Yeah, experience was definitely definitely on my side. And how many years has that taken? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot. I'm 30 now, so a lot of years. I mean, it was incredible to watch, and you're just so confident on this track. <laughs> and it used to be the jumps, but do you feel you're really getting to hang with those technical sections as well? Yeah, I think, like you said, the jumps definitely helps when I come in the week. I'm not too scared of them, but the technical bits, I've been here six years now, so it's helping really, like, I kind of know where I'm going and this now. I blew a foot, like I said, on the row gap, and I knew I needed it in for that next bit because otherwise I was crashing, but just got it back in in time. And you had such a big injury <laughs> earlier in the week. How do you put that to the back of your mind when you're faced with that? I mean, the back of my mind's very sore, the back of my <laughs> head right now, but really tried. I tried to hit the rock stab not too quick at the top, but still almost messed it up. So I don't know, really just try and forget about it and enjoy the event. It's such an incredible week, isn't it? And so different to World Cup racing. I mean, I'm sure we're going to see you back here, but why does everyone come back every year? Yeah, I don't know, because they're all idiots, but I guess it's just <laughs> Red Bull UK on such an awesome event. And i got to say a word on the judge, <laughs> gutted for him. Don't worry, Crash, but gutted, like, Joe and everyone, like, it's such a good vibe between the riders, as you see, so we all just want to keep coming back. It was utterly wonderful to watch. A huge congratulations, and Thank we look you. forward to seeing you thanks again. Thanks so much, and a massive thanks to all my sponsors, Pivot, Fly, my mum, my girlfriend, Emma, dogs at home and everyone, so <laughs> thanks for having us. <laughs> Can he do it again? We're going to find out over the next two and a half minutes. Nice back break there. I can't quite see it for that angle. He's been doing it all week. It's honestly one of the steasiest things to do. Perfect off all these jumps. I mean, he's jumped these jumps more than any of the guys that are here this week. So, yeah, but I had my money on Bernard all week and he's, he's delivered. He's mega stylish, mega stylish. Little back break drag there as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, perfect. I mean, you can see these guys that are actually racing this to win. They, they're not, they don't have, they've obviously not got styling it up. Like Bernard is one of the most stylish guys, throws whips off at every jump, every opportunity. But at this race, if you want to win now, you have to be racing hard. And you have to be focused on the bits in between the jumps. Just get over the jumps, no heroics, and get to the bottom. He's done it. Three times a Red Bull Hardline winner. Why is it that we see him win here, Reese? I mean, not once, not twice, three times. Most riders, you know, battle to get down this course once in their career. But he's, you know, he's always on top here. I mean, like I've said, he's, he's so confident. And this is almost Bernard's event now, you know, with G not managing to make it these last couple of years. And he's the guy that's been here the most. And he loves big jumps, rides motocross bikes all the time, yeah. which, you know, that really gets you comfortable with bigger jumps. And, yeah, it seems to be Bernard's race at the minute. It's going to be really hard to knock off in, in any conditions. And perfect conditions is going to make it even harder. He does. He laps it up every second of it. He was first here in practice to go off all the big drops. I mean, he did the POV earlier in the week. I know a lot of riders kind of said they didn't want want to do it Bernard stepped up <laughs> and interesting to hear him say that his foot came out that's not the best situation really to be in is it what does he mean by that the foot's unclipped from the pedal I mean it has to go back in right yeah yeah so like I mentioned some of these riders on flat some of them on clip so sometimes if you land heavy enough your bike gets hung up in a little hole if your toes are slightly down how we unclip our feet is by twisting our foot and pushing slightly forward so if you land off something really heavy and your foot slips off the pedal and just the right angle it can blow clean off yeah. so then you have the only way to get your foot back on is to get your feet level so you have to sit down and clip it back in luckily there's a nice big smooth bend from there get it back in but I've no doubt he was a little bit terrified there yeah absolutely great to see Joe Smith at the finish area as well so he made his way down well this year for the first time ever we're rewarding the BF Goodridge Rider of the Week award voted for by the riders here and awarded to the rider that has con contributed the most to morale and committed themselves to helping others throughout their time at this year's Red Bull Hardline let's see who's won and it's Josh Lowe. Wow, well, look at that. A very deserving winner, I think, don't you? Absolutely. I'm, I'm chuffed to bits for that. And you can tell he is as well. well yeah, I mean... Great he, choice. He's kept his head down all week. He's just got on with it. First time here at Red Bull Hardline. Brought in, actually, as a reserve just a couple of weeks ago. What an yeah. incredible experience for that man. He's been so mature this week. That's, that is fully deserved. I've enjoyed watching him. Cade Edwards would be happy with that. Just 2.2 back in the end for third place for Cade. I mean, that's a big result for that man. He's going to get confidence from that, I feel. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think Cade will be absolutely buzzing with that. He's, I'm pretty sure he was shooting for a podium here. So a top three, is, he'll be stoked on that. And I think it's been a long time coming at this event for yeah. Cade. Like you said, this is, a bit of, this is an event for Cade. So hopefully that's going to give him some confidence going into the next World Cups as well. Should be good. Absolutely. Braga Vestavik, I mean, you know, fourth place which is what he had here in 2019 he is a former world cup racer but you know he's he's got over a big crash in the week i think probably more importantly he's got over ripping his dad's cords <laughs> yeah he said what am i going to do now is i'm gonna have to cut him off make shorts no honestly it's frags right that top section from Prague was wild and that is that's going to be a, worth going back and watching to be honest that was i'll be going back to watch that so hey brag sprague's going to be stoked with that he's not he's not really here i mean he'd love to win but at the same time he's not a guy that's going to get disappointed by a poor result he's here for a good time he's enjoyed himself and he's enjoyed his time doing it so we're we going to see you back here reese i mean we've had an incredible week wandering around the mountain riding around the mountain we've seen we've seen a lot of big crashes but we haven't seen anyone seriously hurt really i mean that is great news isn't it this week absolutely that is exactly what you want to see i've been i've been nervous up on track you don't want to watch these riders have big crashes and you definitely don't want to watch them getting hurt so it's it's been different seeing it trackside and watching these guys and when they make it look easy you're like oh i'd love a shot at that <laughs> and then when they make it look hard you just don't want anything to do with it when it looks hard it's really it's hard. hard anyway let's go down to the podium then and see our top three from today so in third place today, a brilliant ride down the mountain for Cade Edwards. Yes, Cade. There you go. Break the trophy. Look yes, how happy he is with that. Honestly, so chuffed for that. I'm buzzing for him. Well done, kid. From Bristol in the UK, second place today goes to Laurie Greenland. Yeah, Los deserves a podium here. He's been hunting for one for a while, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, well he's going to come back and push for the win next yeah, year. I think there's no reason not to, I don't think. But 
today for a record third time. A man who has made this event very much his own. Bernard Kerr takes the win of Red Bull Hardline 2021. And there was never a moment of doubt in that man's mind, I'm going to say. Absolutely not. You cannot argue that. I think he would have been predicting this a few months ago, to be honest. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> so congratulations to Bernard. It's going to be chaos down there for a little bit. Probably run late into the evening, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. If anybody starts firing those pick bikes up again, it's going to be carnage. But it was an incredible result. Sam Gale came in in 10th. Theo, uh, Theo Erlangson there finished in ninth place. A good ride for the South African. Only just... Uh, Eight seconds separating the top ten, which, you know, on a course as hard as, as Red Bull Hardline, that's pretty tight, actually. That is, honestly, that's, yeah, that's really tight. A long course, and like you said, that you can't race certain parts of this track, so that's really impressive. Iniguez, first world, excuse me, first Red Bull ramp uh, Hardline for that man, comes in sixth place, just ahead of Adam Brayton. Chaos Seagrave as well, but the top three, big smiles on their faces. Cade Edwards, 235.7 in the end. Laurie Greenland and Bernard Kerr. Yeah, a great day's racing. Cannot argue with that. That was amazing to be a part of. These guys are going to be stoked. Yeah, it was really something wanted to behold. Well, an incredible day's racing we've seen here in the Dovey Valley. And all, as always, this, ride, this race has pushed the riders to their limits and rewarded the best and bravest amongst them. Reese, thank you very much for joining me. It's been absolutely incredible to have you alongside me, to commentate alongside a world downhill champion. That's something else I've never done before. Mate, to commentate alongside you has been an absolute pleasure. The whole crew here has been amazing this week. I've learned so much. What a hell of an experience. So yeah. thanks for having me. No, it's been, the pleasure has been all out. Thank you for joining us at home. We'll see you in 2022. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time from Red Bull Hardline.